Notice of a public meeting of the City Commission of the City of Brownsville. Pursuant to Chapter 551, Title V of the Texas Government Code, the Texas Open Meetings Act, notice is hereby given that the City Commission of the City of Brownsville, Texas, in accordance with Article 5, Section 12 of the Charter of said City, will convene a workshop, an executive session, and a regular meeting on Tuesday, April 5, 2011, at 4.45 p.m., 5 p.m., and 6 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me read the correct uh, agenda. I wasn't following you, so I was just listening. <laughs> 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 it said March 15th. Who it? <laughs> oh, well, I just mentioned it's like March 15th. Who uh, it? <laughs> Somebody's paying attention. Somebody right here. <laughs> sorry Thank about you, that. Thank you, whoever did. <laughs> okay. No, this is the correct agenda. Notice of a public meeting of the City Commission of the City of Brownsville pursuant to Chapter 551, Title V of the Texas Government Code, the Texas Open Meetings Act notice is hereby given that the City Commission of the City of Brownsville, Texas, in accordance with Article 5, Section 12 of the Charter of said city, will convene a workshop, an executive session, and a regular meeting on Tuesday, April 5, 2011, at 4.45 p.m., 5 p.m., and 6 p.m. in the Commission Chambers on the second floor of Brownsville City Hall, Federal building located at 1001 East Elizabeth Street, Brownsville, Cameron County, Texas. Uh, first item is a workshop update from the Environmental Advisory Committee as per Ordinance 2010-911-F. Hi, my name is Rose Timmer and I'm with Healthy Communities of Brownsville, but I'm here to represent the Environmental Advisory Committee that this commission created when the ordinance for banning of plastic shopping bags uh, was enacted. Um, we wanted to let you know that we are continuing to meet. Uh, the month of January, I think we met every week, but after that we've been meeting on a monthly, if not three to four um, times a month. Um, the bag ban has been successful. The uh, environmental fee monies, I understand, are being received by the city. I'm not privy to that figure because I'm not a city employee, uh, but they will be made available to the Environmental Advisory Committee. And with that, the Environmental Committee wanted to, uh, to let the city commission know that we want to make sure those monies go to environmental projects. Um, not necessarily just cleanups because we're already doing that, but we do need to do outreach, we need to do education. Uh, we have probably <coughs> handed out over 125, 150,000 free bags. I know that this coming Earth Day, our major stores will be giving out, or will be giving out reusable bags again. They seem to be the thing to do. Um, so we are hoping that some of those monies will be used for a Brownsville city bag that you all as commissioners and uh, for city committees. Uh, the committee, the Environmental Advisory Committee is also putting together some guidelines for, uh, for recommendation to the commission on how to disperse that money for environmental issues. Uh, so we will bring that to you next time we do an update. Uh, it, it's going to be a simple process. You know, if somebody wants to do something environmental, education, outreach, uh, they need to, to come before us or you and let us know what they want, how they're going to spend it, give us a budget, and then we will go from there and make the recommendation to the city fathers about what to do with that. Uh, Rose, Sir? The last time I checked on the figure, which was about a month ago, uh, we have received like $18,000. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. from the it's not, it's not as high if it's, it's 18,000. It's increased since then. Okay. It's I'm not sure as that. high mm -hmm. as, as we had anticipated because I know one of the big box stores uh, when we started talking about this had said to me, Rose, <clears throat> with a number of transactions we have in the Brownsville stores, we anticipate that a quarter of our customers will not have bags and there will be a surplus of about $50,000. And I said, really? I hadn't even thought that. I said, really? He said, yeah. I said, hmm. So it's nowhere near that. It's, it's a good thing that it's not as much as we think it is. If it's 18 or probably 20, 22, 
I know that the month of February should have been brought in now and maybe they're working on the March figures and we'll get a quarterly total for that. Um, but you, but it's, it's great that the citizens of Brownsville have embraced it and are doing what they can to save their dollar and use a reusable bag. Well, I think to me the indicator is that during this transition phase, which we started in January, right. the indicator is very low. Okay. As far as people not taking their, their recyclable, uh, uh, reusable yeah. bags. Um, the other thing is if you could incorporate in your talks and maybe uh, doing any amendments that we need to do through, your, through the committee, mm -hmm. instead of uh, saying uh, banning plastic bags, I think we should say uh, replacement of plastic bags. Okay. Because plastic bags are still allowed for those yes. who uh, want to pay the fee. Uh, so yes. I mean, they're, they're still allowed. So I think the the wording, uh, changing it to replacement, I think is more friendly and, and less. Okay. Uh, so you might consider that. Yeah, and I know uh, Charlie wanted us to say and just call it a bag ordinance as opposed to a plastic bag ordinance. He he would prefer that also. So he's in agreement with you. Now I have been alerted by uh, yourself and uh, Commissioner Camarillo uh, about. Of what's going on in Austin, which will affect Brownsville's bag ordinance. Um, there are two, there is a senator and a house representative that have introduced two separate bills. They're the same bill, word for word, uh, that preempts what local cities have done. And when we saw that, it was, it was really heartbreaking because we've worked very hard on this for the last Two, two years as a committee to, to do this. And with, you know, one, if the, if the Senate or the House pass those bills, everything we've done would go out the window. Well, uh, let me tell you, uh, I was in Austin a month ago and okay. became aware of this. Uh -huh. And that's when I got the staff at the city to work with our legislators. Right. And uh, I made them aware that we needed to, and I even called Mayor Pinkerton that we needed to go and, and show a presence over there at the hearings. Yes. Uh, since then, the hearings have taken place. Uh, I sent our, our health director and our city uh, assistant That's attorney uh, to go work with the legislators, and Mayor Pinkerton, I think, also went over there. Yeah. And um, the, the uh, city uh, assistant attorney is working with the legislators to, to make sure that our rights are protected right. and that we're not preempted. Right. So, but it's important, uh, as I made it known uh, when I came back from Austin, that <coughs> citizens uh, contact their senator, mm -hmm. Senator Lucio, uh, State Representative Eddie, Eddie Lucio III, and the uh, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, other uh, legislators to uh -huh. let them know that uh, we do not support uh, any exactly. preempting of, of city control of how to deal with uh, the litter and the ordinances dealing with bag replacement okay so you know yeah. you're on the right track and and, and, uh, and I, I do have some contacts in austin and and ruben obell because i've worked with him on other committees with uh representative lucio the third filled me in on what's <coughs> happened as of tonight and he said art was very persuasive and had made some inroads over there as well as your assistant uh, city attorney so brownsville was, was very well representative as was uh, South Padre Island, they had somebody there from there, and they had the uh, mayor from Fork Stockton, which <coughs> also had banned uh, plastic bags in their own city. Uh, I had an interview this afternoon from a gentleman in Austin, and he wanted to know what we were going to do if it passed. And I let him know what we were going to do. But either way, no. <laughs> I just told what him can, we had What can we do? we got to follow <laughs> state law. I said, what can we do? Yeah. I said, no. But I told him that um, it would be <coughs> a shame that you know this all this time and effort that this commission and this these, uh, this community has put into it is going to be stricken because of what's going on in Austin. Well, what but needs to <laughs> what needs to be made known is that state is looking to impose fees yeah. to balance their budget. That's why they're doing this because this does not deal in any way with cleaning up the litter. Right. or uh, protecting our environment or anything. They're just looking at a source of revenue 
to, to balance a budget. And yeah. the monies do not go to the cities, it goes to the state. It goes to the state, right. So anyway, uh, just to update you and, 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 and finalize, we are still meeting. We are still, oh, we're going to have a public forum um, at the end of April. Uh, we've been approached by some people who, who want to talk to us in a public <coughs> manner about the uh, bag ordinance. Some of them, one of them is a business and they would like to know where people are and where people stand. So we, yes. I was gonna ask you a question if I could talk. Sure. sure. A lot of people in my uh, district mm -hmm. have asked me and come up to me, I, mean, I, support, I supported this uh, ban ordinance, but mm -hmm. what they're seeing is you have people in restaurants like uh, um, Chick-fil-A, you have other, businesses that are going to uh, paper bags. Yes. Uh, and some of them are, 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 are chains, they're, they're, yes. they're national chains. But we see Walmart and HEB still charging that dollar for these little plastic bags. Why are we not letting them go uh, and provide paper bags? Why are we, are we giving them a way out or, or what no. are we doing? Uh, just so you know, Walmart will never and they told us this, they will never ever have paper in their stores so, so nationwide. So what, what does that do? That means that they will have reusable bags or they will have a plastic bag. Not because, they're only charging because we're asking them to. <coughs> Walmart by the year 2015 has made a pledge that they will reduce their plastic <coughs> by at least 35 to 45% in packaging, in giving out plastic bags, so Walmart, will, when they came to the table in January, uh, whenever we started this, that was the first thing for us. Don't make us give out pa paper bags because we will not do that. Why not? Because they use the cardboard boxes to recycle to make paper bags for, for other ventures. Well, that sir, that, I mean, it's a policy of Walmart. It's not something that we asked them to do. It's, it's something that came from their corporate headquarters. And, and why they do what they do, I do not know. So I, are we, in a sense, letting them slide or what? We are not letting them slide. They choose as a business not to supply paper bags, just like they choose as a business who they buy their, pla their, be their paper bags from and where they go to get that. That's mm -hmm. their, their business right to so, do that. So, in a sense, because they're offering that $1 charge, that gives them the go-ahead to sell plastic bags. Because we tell that's them to the charge the commission. That's in the ordinance, Commissioner. That's a part of the ordinance. Yes. Remember, as part of the ordinance, plastic is allowed if you ask the customer wants plastic. Mm -hmm. Now, we've talked, and, and the discussion will be that at, at a certain point in time, if not after a year, that we want to do away with that. And, and well, they're ready to do that. I mean, they're ready to do away with it now. But it's in the ordinance that we would allow, a, we, we would allow the one dollar surcharge for plastic yeah. if, again, the customer would, you know, wants plastic. Yeah. Um, but it's our hope to do away with the surcharge, a way to do away with uh, plastic altogether. Yeah. For um, you know. Now for restaurants, short. restaurants in your ordinance are exempt, but a lot of the restaurants, the majority of them, have chosen to go to a paper bag, for their because that's what they chose. Stripes, Lopez did not want to deal with accounting to the, the, the um, city. They did not want to do that, so they packed up all their plastic bags and there is no plastic in their store. And that was certainly an option they had. The same thing, Stripes did the same thing. He said, you know what, I'm not gonna mess with this. This is another report I have to, fit, to, to uh, uh, put together. He said, I'm not gonna do it. We're not giving out plastic, so we don't have if you went in there and asked them for a plastic bag, they would say, sorry, we don't have any. And no. a lot of the stores had their, their plastic shipped to other parts of the country. I'm but sorry. Let me point out, uh, Rose, that in the ordinance, it does allow paper bags, and it's a matter of choice of the retailer, but mm -hmm. it's gotta be a certain thickness, 0 0.60 millimeters, so they are allowed. And uh, they're reusable at that thickness, but to, allow uh, uh, paper bags to be commonly used goes against what we were trying to do 
yeah, clean in up. the beginning. That was a way to do away with the littering. Yeah. So, you know, if we were to go uh, switch to paper bags, you're going to see a bunch of paper bags along the highways and, and stuff like that. So it goes against the mission of cleaning up the city. It also goes against <coughs> the trying to do away with uh, fossil fuel production of, of these bags because it costs more to transport them. They're heavier uh, and it, 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 t it cuts down trees and it, it costs more uh, energy to, to produce them. So uh, this is what we've done is taking the lead to be uh, uh, the going green city I think that we, we want to be and to encourage to reduce the amount of, of fossil fuel production of this type. Of I totally understand, but by giving them an option to pay the dollar, aren't we promoting plastic bags? I mean, well, it's, and it's, you're it's right, a it's an option. And, 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 and the committee did not want to take an option away from people. Uh, the majority of the people, um, <coughs> the majority of the people uh, have chosen to uh, put their groceries back in their baskets. Um, like I said, the numbers for the month of January are 18, 20,000. That's very low compared to what the HEBs, the Walmarts, the Lopez's thought they were going to have. Lopez, I think, did it for the month of January, and then they just got rid of their fees. And they will not give you a, pa a plastic bag. They will give you a paper bag or I encourage you to buy one of their bags. For the dollar that you're going to spend on plastic, you can get four reusable Walmart bags. You can get two HEB reusable bags. And that's the way the cashiers um, should be promoting to it. The citizens of Brownsville have a problem thinking that this one dollar is going straight into your pocket. And that's why the Environmental Committee is here today to assure them that it's not. It will be used for projects like picking up tires. Uh, we've talked about doing, you did this, Mayor, when you were mayor the first time, where you sat at a desk and gave people cash for <coughs> bringing mattresses and trash and things like that. We're thinking about doing something else like that. And then we have our cleanups that, that need to be done. So um, did I answer your question, sir, or, or are you still, you look like you're kind of confused. What? I'm not confused, it's just, it's uh -huh. just, uh, would you rather we didn't have a fee and no plastic bags? No. Okay. I think I think just the the, the poor areas in my district uh -huh. and the poor people have to go to H E B and to Walmart and have to pay that dollar. Yeah. And yes, you know, they should be taking their reusable bags. We right. we know that. But, but we all they're saying that. when they go to other places they'll give them a free paper bag. Why uh -huh. why isn't Walmart or H E B giving me a free paper bag? Right. You know, why do I have to pay that dollar? You know, when I forget my bags, because yeah. right now everybody's forgetting their bags. I'm, sure. a, I'm a victim of that. But they're saying, why, why, is other, are, why are other places being nice enough to provide a paper bag, but Walmart and HEB aren't? Because they're nice. I don't know. <laughs> but, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's hey, a Rose, it's, We can go back and ask the Walmart and HEB yeah. saying, you know what, you know, you're going to lose out on your customers. You know, this is about customer service. I remember we talked about that <laughs> day one, yeah. where we told the stores, what are you going to do? Somebody comes in and I don't have a bag. Well, they provided them a bag, but they did that for a period of time. And if this is still ongoing, then, and it's about customer service, you don't want to lose your customers. So you, you help them, you give them a bag. Yeah, but so I don't think I we think should interfere. Them. I don't think we should interfere. They should I'm not saying we should. I'm just saying that's something to bring up. To and we can manager. certainly bring it up. They will know. They will know. If they're losing customers, they, yes. I assure you, they will take the initiative to address that. And we did have a meeting with, with the Walmarts and the HEBs, Lopez, Stripes, and we asked them because we were concerned about the people that are going to San Benito to shop. You know, we had people that told us they were going to do that. They have not seen a decrease in any of their sales. It's working. It's working. They're quite proud of it. They're a very good example for their national chains. And, and um, the issue has come up at committee asking them, the other issue was when are we going to get rid of this, how are we going to do this, those kinds of things. But those things are, are still in the talking stage. May I ask a question? Sure. Rose, how extensive are cleanups now compared to uh, prior to the ordinance? I have to tell you that, you know, healthy communities used to do quite a lot of cleanups and then we got involved in this bag thing. Um, right now is Keep Texas Beautiful Month. It's a trash bash and I know 
Keep Brown So Beautiful has taken the lead on that, and they have done several cleanups. We are going to do a community-wide cleanup towards the end of the month, uh, the end of April, the beginning of May, and we will have areas targeted that need some serious cleaning up, and then we will uh, go from there and see how clean the city can stay. Um, we've had people comment that they notice the city's already clean because, of course, the bags aren't there. But there's other trash out there. Do we weigh the trash that's sure collected? Yes, we're there. supposed to weigh the trash. We, we leave everything by the side, and we have a truck that comes in and weighs it. Um, I am not privy to those figures. That's something that BBC, your Brownsville Beautification right. Committee, and your Keep Brownsville Beautiful should have for you and they should make those available to the citizens. Well, so I'd like, I would like to see a comparison from mm -hmm. this yeah. time of year to last year, since we didn't have the ordinance in effect last year. Right. It'd be nice to know to decrease, sure. if any, in litter collection. And I think we probably do have the figures from last year because we got a gentleman on board who's doing real good about keeping track of that. So we should be able to give you something like that, but it probably won't be till May or June because we have the ability to do all of these cleanups I want to say till May the 15th, or well, is actually, it the end of April? Well, actually, Rose, what we'll do is we'll go back to the, to the, to the Governor's Achievement Award oh, okay. grant yeah. that we did, and you'll see what, what, ha what got submitted um, a few months ago, mm -hmm. and you'll see what was submitted last year and the year before that, and you'll see the trend of not only volunteers in terms of trash and events that have increased over the past few years. Yeah. I mean, you know, the groups worked very, very hard. So we can give you poundage, we can give you Good. events, number of volunteers. <coughs> um, it's, it's, you know, I'll ask Eli if he can come yeah. next time and, and give you an overview over the last three to four yeah. years. That'd be nice to include on our yeah. website so people can exactly. see mm -hmm. that this is really having an impact. The other, the the other thing, I was chosen to judge some of these government achievement awards in, in Austin, and I was up there two weeks ago. The other thing that a lot of the other cities are doing is they're able to tell their communities how much recyclables they've collected, whether it be month to month, year to year, quarter to quarter. And I know that we have one recycle center that the city is responsible for, but I have never seen the figures as to what goes through that center, how it affects the city. I asked for those figures. I think I, t I emailed you oh, about okay. that. Oh, okay. Uh huh. I emailed you about that, and they're working to put. Uh, Put them so together for together. us? Yeah. yeah, it would be good to do some sort of comparison as to what the, our recycle center is doing. Because uh, I think a lot of people are in tune with that and trying, trying to do that. But I think the most important thing uh, to remember, Rose, mm -hmm. is that uh, what the negative impact plastic bags had on our environment. Sure. And our city as a whole. So I think uh, we have transformed the city, I mean, just overnight. Yeah. It has really made a huge difference, and I think it's a good example for the rest of the state and, and other okay. parts of the country with that. So thank you for your good work, and everybody has worked on this, the commission. I think they have something to be very proud of. I, I don't think we need to mess with it. It is working. Okay. And I think overall, <laughs> uh, I was J.C. Penney today, and uh, overall, the, ca the cashers told me, uh, people seem to accept it pretty yeah. well, and they understand why we're doing it. So. I think we need to keep on doing what we're doing. Yeah. Thank Commi you so much. Commissioner Atkinson, if you have some very specific places that we could target to give out bags to your commission, <coughs> to your area, please let the commissioner know so that we can get out there. Okay. Uh, and then we'll try to, to <laughs> get out there and help and see what we can do, sir. Yeah, thank you. Okay? Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Very thank you. Okay. Uh, the next item is uh, executive session. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. A second. A second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. To adjourn. Aye. Uh, may I read the? She needs to read them in the record. <laughs> Items uh, well, to be discussed in executive session. Discussion pursuant to section 551.087 of the Texas Government Code regarding economic development. B. Discussion pursuant to section 551.072 of the Texas Government Code regarding real property. Item C. Discussion with legal counsel pursuant to section 551.071 of the Texas Government Code regarding pending litigation. Item D, discussion with legal counsel pursuant to section 551.071 of the Texas Government Code regarding, regarding pending litigation. Okay, can I have that motion again? So moved. Second. I have a second. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries. We'll adjourn to executive session, come back as soon as we can to continue with our regular meeting. Y'all can stretch your legs. Thank you for y'all's patience. Uh, I'm sorry we took a little long, uh, but we're ready to get started with our meeting. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you for your presence here tonight. Because we know where your presence is, then we know there is peace. So Lord God, bring peace to this council chamber this evening. Lord God, let your presence be felt and known here this evening. Lord God, we just ask you that you give us discernment in all the decisions that had to be made. Lord God, that we'll seek you in these decisions, Lord God. Not what man desires, but what you desire, Lord God so that because you know what's best for this city, Lord God, and we just bring in it, we lay it out before you, Lord, all that we have. And Lord God, I pray for this city that you'd put a hedge of protection around this city. For all those that want to bring evil in this city, Lord God, that it will not be allowed in this city, that this city will be made a safe city under your protection, Lord God. And those that want to bring, bring evil into it will be set aside and put under your hand, Lord God. And we just pray for thou, Lord God, for this coming election, Lord God, that this, there will be transparency, that there will be honesty in all those candidates that, we come to be, that you come before us that they want in this election, Lord God. We pray for your blessings upon this city. We pray for a blessing upon the mayor and all the council members here today and all those that are in attendance. But most of all, Lord God, we ask for your peace and you're for, and you're for discern, your discernment, and let your will be done, Lord God. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Please be seated. <coughs> okay, uh, Stella. Um, action on executive session item as advised by legal counsel in executive session for item B. May I like to make the motion that uh, we allow, we continue item number 13 for 25 more days. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All Aye. opposed? Motion carries. Next item. Mayor's report. 
Um, we had a hazmat exercise at the uh, Los Tomates Bridge, and it, it was closed from 12.01 to 5 a.m. It was a binational exercise in case of a chemical spill on the bridge caused by an accident. It was a uh, great experience, learning experience for me, and I think for everybody, uh, but I can assure the public that uh, we learned a lot and we're better prepared in case there should be a uh, hazardous material accident uh, and spill there on the bridge. Uh, Matamoros and Brownsville uh, joined efforts. Mm -hmm. Everybody that participated, uh, mm -hmm. I think, uh, should be congratulated for, for uh, carrying out so well. I think the last exercise we had was about 1993 and the only exercise uh, since then, and I'm, I'm proposing that be done every two years because I think that's very critical to uh, uh, sharpening our skills to be able to respond jointly to some kind of emergency of that nature and also to reassure the citizens that we are uh, doing all we can to ensure their public safety and manage and protect our uh, river from contamination and uh, save lives or put minimize risk there. So that, that, was, a, that was a great uh, exercise that, that, uh, that I enjoyed participating in. Um, there is um, uh, an effort by uh, the city of Brownsville and as a humanitarian and founder of PAWS, I want to encourage all pet owners and citizens to uh, go to a, a link on your computer and vote for the animal shelter to participate in a uh, grant uh, proposal uh, that allows us to compete for up to $100,000. And that's done by voting. If you go to the uh, public channel, you can read the link there. And the more votes that we, we get in support of our animal shelter, uh, the better chance we have to compete for $100,000 which can be used to uh, spay and neuter, uh, educate, or maybe expand our animal shelter, which is uh, sorely needed and increase adoptions. I uh, encourage all the citizens, doesn't cost anything, just take the time and network out with people and encourage them to go out and vote for, uh, for this effort to compete for $100,000 uh, from our ASPCA. Um, had breakfast with the mayor of Matamoros. Uh, I'm glad to report. Um, we are doing this every week to make sure that our lines of communication and coordination are, are there. Um, and uh, he also is interested, and I'm very happy to report, to pick up the uh, humanitarian agenda and working with rescue groups in Matamoros. So Brownsville has made a, a huge difference, uh, especially for those pet lovers that follow this, uh, in setting the standard uh, locally and regionally and we've made huge improvements that I think has encouraged others and given them courage to s speak for the voiceless and uh, help us with the overpopulation of pets ed through education, spay and neutering, and vaccination. So the mayor is going to be working um, with us, and we will be working with him and the rescue groups in Matamoros and Brownsville to raise awareness and hopefully educate people in the responsibility of pet ownership. Um, participate in the Frida Carlo exhibit. Uh, I think I encourage all citizens, it's, it's been extended uh, uh, so that people can, can uh, go see it. I think it's a wonderful cultural experience to uh, appreciate this uh, worldwide uh, exhibit that, that uh, we have here in, in Brownsville. It's a unique opportunity. And today, I'm also happy to report that we received a $130,000 check uh, for the zoo to uh, install solar panels on one of their uh, exhibits. And uh, this was uh, done by uh, Green Mountain, and uh, they're based out of Houston. And uh, this, this money is going to go a long ways. And the solar panels will produce energy uh, the equivalent of, to, of up to four homes, uh, which will bring their uh, electric bill down and also allow them to use 
those tax dollars, I mean those uh, uh, utility dollars for something else. So I think those are the <coughs> main points I wanted to hit. Uh, I continue to have meetings and, uh, and meet with people and, uh, and respond to whatever I'm asked to attend. Um, I also uh, uh, want to tell you that uh, for those who were praying for me, I, I did go uh, and have surgery on my knee. Uh, it's, it's not as bad as it looks, but uh, uh, hopefully I'll be, be back and around without the cane soon. The timing is bad, but who can pick these times when you need to have surgery, you need to have surgery. It was very painful before I had the surgery, and, and now the pain is not as much, but I'm getting around, and I appreciate people who, who prayed for me and called me and, and support and everything else. With that, we'll move on to uh, the commissioner's report. Uh, Mayor, real quick, real quick before you talk, on action item A, uh, item B was the wasn't the item number 13. I just want to make sure, Stella, you're clear on that. Item Correct, B, item, item, item B is something else. It's not the 25-day the deal, Item B is the recycling. Item B is the recycling. Okay, recycling and, and what item is no, that? But she read a, item A. Yeah, item A, a says. No, it's, it's, item, it's item B. But he said item, item 13. I mean, he, they said the item 13. Pardon me? They said item 13. Okay, to continue right. item 13? You know, I'll, while we're checking my motion, since it's specifically for item B. Yeah. For item B of the executive session. Yes. And that motion would be to, to move to continue, have legal counsel um, work with those counterparts. But that's item A. Item B. Item B. Item, okay. yes, item it B says, of the executive session. Right. Yes. Item B. Okay. I'll second that. Right. That's correct. Okay. The, the mm -hmm. vote was made. They're just making the, the change on the, the no. minutes. That's it. That's intended. Okay. Next. Commissioner Camarillo. <coughs> I'm going to pass on my on the district for update. Okay. Uh, next. Commissioner I'm Atkinson. Bypass. Uh, oh, just tomorrow, tomorrow at 10 a.m., in my district, uh, there will be a ceremony uh, for the family of the Zapata family who, who uh, had their, one of their sons lost their lives, Jaime J. Zapata. Uh, we, the city ran into a snag where, where they, we found out that Coffeeport Road, there's actually a Mr. Coffee. And uh, he came forth and was met with the family, met with the city. Supposedly, way back in 1929, uh, there was a Mr. Coffee who owned land as the Brownsville Health stated over there by, by Whataburger and the expressway. But during the years, 802 got chopped up and moved around. So uh, he came forward and said, hey, look, my family had, he had a, a father who worked for, as a game warden who passed away of something, pneumonia or something. Uh, so they named part of uh, that road, 802, they named it Coffee. And then the port came, the port park came later, so it became named Coffee Port Road. Well, they, they, these two families have since met, and they're okay with splitting the street. So west of uh, Old Port Isabel Road will be changed to Coffee Avenue, and east of uh, Old Port Isabel Road will be Jaime J. Zapata Avenue. So uh, I'm glad these families met. You know, they're both... Uh, uh, <coughs> Honored to be sharing the street, so we invite everybody tomorrow at 10 a.m. and I think it's going to be on the. It got moved to what for, Highway 48, Coffee Port and Highway 48 in that area. Yes. Yeah, in that area. So we. we, we Can uh, you be more specific for those public, who want to attend? By public, public works. Yeah. By public works. Okay. In the area of the couple of public Okay, so it's on Coffee Port Road right before you get to 802. Right, right as you cross the railroad tracks. Is it's that right? Coffee Port Road just before you get to Highway 48. Highway 48, I'm sorry, Highway 48, that's right. Okay, thank you, Commissioner. Anything else? Okay. Commissioner Gowan. Ooh, hang on, Commissioner Gowan. Commissioner, Commissioner Gowan. Gowan. Commissioner. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. I apologize. Uh, want to thank everyone for coming out to the park on Saturday for the midpoint weigh-in for the Biggest Loser uh, Challenge. We were very fortunate to again attract uh, Danny Cahill, who is NBC Biggest Loser winner a couple of seasons ago. He was delighted to come back to Brownsville and bring his wife. 
um, and spoke very beautifully about motivation and not giving up and uh, was a big attraction for a lot of our people out at the park. Uh, we don't have all of the results for the midpoint weigh-in yet because uh, AMFILs, who had a very large group of people, had their own midpoint weigh-in at the plant, and I don't have their numbers. But I can tell you that um, the average weight lost uh, was 7.2, 7.9 pounds with a range of 0.2 to 53.4 pounds in one individual, and that represented or corresponded to an average waist decrease in size of 2 inches in the uh, folks that came out for the midpoint way. And again, I'll have the final numbers next time uh, after we analyze the Amphils group. Biggest Loser's not over, it's just halfway done. I would like to invite and remind everyone that this Saturday, uh, April 9th, there will be a uh, 5K run walk at the port, and that is the uh, Port of Brownsville, Ambiotech, and the Brownsville uh, Rio Grande Railroad uh, contribution or participation in uh, the Biggest Loser. On the 16th, the UTB is having a family fun fest at Lincoln Park, uh, and Su Clinica Familiar is hosting a uh, healthy eating fair at the farmer's market. Then there's the Easter weekend, and we're off, and on the 30th is the Zumba event where Brownsville will try and uh, break the uh, Guinness Book of World Records uh, record for the number of people to Zumba in one place at one time, and we are competing, believe it or not, against Glasgow, Scotland on the same day. So please look out for the Biggest Loser website, the City of Brownsville website, for all of that information. We'll need all of your help um, to get through all of these weekends and have a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Proclamations, National Public Health Week. Arturo Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. Dr. Wells. Well, Arturo's changed. Yeah, Arturo's changed a little bit today. <laughs> but he's out of town. He's taking care of business for the health department, and I will stand him in for him for this honor here. Okay. Uh, would you read the city, uh, city secretary? Would you read the proclamation? A proclamation of the city commission of Brownsville, Texas, designating April 4th through 10th, 2011, as National Public Health Week in our city. Whereas the goal of public health is to empower individuals and communities to take responsibility for their own health by minimizing known unhealthy behaviors, taking appropriate preventive measures, and making informed cost-effective choices about the use of appropriate and effective health services, and whereas the public health today represents society's best effort to improve health by reducing social and physical environmental health threats and by promoting access to proven cost-effective preventive health practices, and whereas unhealthy environments, poor nutrition, and physical inactivity among children have contributed to the national ob obesity epidemic with profound implications to quality of life healthcare cost, and whereas living a healthy life can not only lead to a longer life, but to a more enjoyable life for you and for those around you. Now therefore, we the members of the City Commission of the City of Brownsville, Texas, by virtue of the authority vested by the charter of said city, and on behalf of all our citizens, we do hereby designate April the 4th through the April the 10th, 2011, as National Public Health Week in our city, and further urge all our citizens to strive for a healthier lifestyle. Done on this, the fifth day of April, 2011, signed by Mayor Pat Almada and city commissioners. accept this award on uh, this proclamation on behalf of the uh, public health department. As we all know, without our health, we do not have anything. And we live in an environment where health and safety is a matter of life and death. And the more that we become aware of these issues and what we can do to be more proactive rather than reactive in these issues, you know, life can become a better place for us to live not only in terms of our health, and I'm glad that Rose and that you all are having a lot of activities, especially trying to break the Sumba records, the, the 5K activities we have in the weight loss programs, all very important in public health. But we need to have that information and knowledge to be able to accomplish these goals. Safety is another issue that, and I'm glad that the uh, HASMAS uh, project went off very well this weekend, and we're very aware of what these chemicals can do and what safety issues we can do to prevent hazards 
and incidents in our home and with our kids in particular, and particularly with a lot of medications that we have in our medicine cabinet. The more aware we are of these issues, the safer the environment is for everyone. Thank you. Okay, the proclamation of the City Commission recognizing John A. Wells, MD, for his dedication to the good health of our community. Whereas John A. Wells, MD, is a 1973 graduate of the University of Texas and a 1979 graduate of the Texas Tech University School of Medicine. And whereas John A. Wells served his country in the U.S. Army from 1981 to 1984 at the Darnell Army Hospital at Fort Hood, Texas. And whereas John Wells, in 1980 was involved with the U.S. Public Health Service and worked at the Brownsville Community Health Clinic. And whereas John A. Wells has devoted more than 30 years of his life to the world of medicine, caring for the sick and engaging in preventative programs aimed at the citizens of our community. And whereas John A. Wells is a member of and has been appointed to organizations and associations that include the American Academy of Pain Medicine, the Cameron Willis County Medical Society, the Texas Medical Association, the American Society of Interventional Pain Physicians, the Texas Pain Society, the American Society of Ringside Physicians, and the American College of Physician Executives. And whereas John A. Wells in 1984 served as the Brownsville Emergency Medical Services Medical Director, and since 2000 has served as health authority for the city of Brownsville, and has been a speaker on dengue to, follow to fellow physicians at local hospitals, hospitals and whereas John Wells was instrumental in the H1N1 event in 2010, and because of his invaluable dedication and effort was able to assume a leadership role that served to protect the citizens of Brownsville, and whereas John Wells presently serves on the State Board of Medical Examiners and is a valued lecturer at the annual Texas Trauma Symposium and for Ortho McNeil Jansen Pharmaceuticals. Now, therefore, we, the members of the City Commission of the City of Brownsville, Texas, by virtue of the authority vested by the charter of said city and on behalf of all of our citizens, do hereby recognize and thank John Wells for his 27 years of devotion and work on behalf of the health of the citizens of Brownsville and for the excellent health care he has provided and continues to provide for those same citizens. Done on this fifth day of April, the Mayor and the City Commission. Thank you very much again for the opportunity to serve the city of Brownsville. And um, being a young emergency room physician, when I came here after I got out of the Army, uh, I loved working in the emergency room and with the MLN service. And we had a chance to make some great changes here. And the present uh, paramedic system you have today, we created at that time with the help of the uh, city managers at that point in time. And I feel very fortunate that I've had the opportunity and to do the things I have here in Brownsville. Thank you very much. Mayor, members of the commission, please help me welcome the Employee of the Month for April 2011, Willie Gonzalez. Uh, Willie's known for a lot of things, and one of the things he is known for is that he's the son of Lydia Gonzalez, who recently retired, and she's in the audience. Proud mom of uh, Willie. Uh, Willie's been with us since December 1992. He, uh, he has worked in several departments within the city and he's, he's currently assigned to our health department. And he oversees and is immediate supervisor for 14 of our uh, ordinance enforcement employees. 
he holds many certifications that uh, he is uh, uh, real good at, and he also assists uh, many of our new employees coming in. He's certified in the food, as a food manager, swimming pool operator, and pesticide applic applicator license, uh, to name a few of the licensees he has received over the years working for us. He is very much uh, thought of, relied upon. Uh, he does some of the expertise in relation to uh, contacting some of the uh, people that we uh, need to contact in relation to uh, uh, issues related to our health and uh, health and, and well-being. As uh, and it comes in right into play with Dr. Will's uh, recognition. Uh, as employee of the month, he is entitled to a day off, and of course, he gets uh, the plaque for the employee of the month, Will Gonzalez, the traditional pin. Uh, and the watch. Of course, when Art gets back, he'll take him to a clean restaurant to eat. <laughs> and uh, he gets to s talk to the commission. Congratulations. Thank you. I'd just like to say thank you for the opportunity for working for the city of Brownsville for so long. And this is truly an honor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Texas Treasurer's Award, Mr. Goodman, Joe. Honorable Mayor, Commissioner Scott, I wish you'd all stay down here because we have something to present to you for a change. That's and, nice. And, 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 and instead of the other way around. Uh, Joe and I were privileged uh, and back in February to be invited by the Texas Historical Commission to attend the Texas Travel Industry of America's Unity Dinner, which is attended by about, what, about 3,000, I think, travel agents uh, and other folks in the travel industry up in Austin. The purpose for us being there is that the governor's wife was presenting to the city of Brownsville what's an award that's called the Tex First Lady's Texas Treasures Award. It's only been given now for three years. Um, let me read you just a few words that Anita Perry had to say about the award so you have an idea what it is. Texas treasures are communities that go the extra mile to discover their roots teach living history lessons and create a lasting legacy for future generations. This award recognizes visionary communities that put in the hard work required to ensure that their hometown is different from the next. It spotlights communities that lovingly maintain their monuments and their past in order to create a stronger future. I should tell you uh, just a couple of things before we hand you the award. Uh, number one, uh, normally they give three city awards. Three cities get this award every year. Uh, we were called and we said, look, we don't know how to tell you this, but we're only giving the award to Brownsville because your application was so far and above more complete and more had been done in Brownsville than anybody else that applied, it would sort of be embarrassing to the other cities. They said, if we put them up there with you. So Brownsville was the only one that got the award uh, this year. The other thing that's part of the award, it's not, there's no cash prize. What they do is they came down and they, they spent three days uh, doing a video with an incredible uh, videographer and director, three folks from the Texas Historic Commission, highlighting why they gave us this award. Uh, normally it's a three minute uh, video. They couldn't cram Brownsville into three minutes, it's 15 minutes. Uh, plus an extra supplement that we, that's going to be added on. Anyway, May 10th uh, at 10 o'clock in the morning, I believe it's a Tuesday, uh, at the Alonzo Building will be a very short ceremony, and the folks, some of the folks will be coming down from Austin to make the presentation of the debut of this, uh, of this video. Uh, Joe and I have seen the unedited one when we were in Austin, which they wouldn't let us bring back because it's not supposed to be released until May 10th. I can tell you when you watch it, you will, you will want to know where this place, we want to live there. We really want to live in this city. This is a city where people care. And the award is not for a particular person, any individual, any individual group, any one entity. It, it for instance, in Brownsville, it encompasses the city, the county, the university, Gorgas Foundation, BHA, the other museums, our, our Heritage Council, and all the folks that have worked on it the uh, Cameron County Historical Commission. There's an awful lot of people who really care about this. And what we try to impress upon them, which is something that's become sort of my motto, uh, which I, I, I have to tell you I've stolen from uh, Joe Riley, who's been the mayor of, 
of uh, Charlotte, I'm sorry, Charleston for 33 years now. And it's, it's very simple. It's that no child should be condemned to live in a place without a past. Uh, and that's, that's what we have, have been striving for for years and that the Texas Historic Commission thinks is so wonderful about Brownsville. And so we invite you all to come on the 10th uh, for a short ceremony for about an hour. And then after that hour, uh, at 11 o'clock, and we'll get flyers out on this, uh, with, there are about six or eight uh, tours that will be given for free to anybody in the public who wants to come. There'll be some downtown, there'll be some at Sable Palm, uh, at the cemetery, many historic sites, Palmito Ranch, uh, at the university. Uh, and it's, it's the one thing that we've been able to say year after year is that we've been able to do this because we've always had the support of our city commission. And that's always made us very proud. And so with that, we would like to give you an award uh, to the city of Brownsville for demonstrating a high level of creativity and ingenuity in recognizing and preserving its authentic sense of place. Signed, Anita Perry, the governor's wife. TTIA is the Tourism Industries Association for the state. So this is a very reputable award. I congratulate staff and fellow commissioners for this because it's, it truly is an awesome award to be recognized by your peers through the state CVBs, the chambers, museums, uh, the arts and culture industry. It's just a phenomenal award to receive. Congratulations. Congratulations uh, again. Um, I forgot, I neglected to mention. Did you get that uh, website address by any chance? No? Okay. Um, I appointed, just for a matter of information, I appointed three board members to the Housing Authority with Divina Garza, Silverio Capistran, and Andy Muniz. Uh, I forgot to mention that in the report. Thank you. Uh, next item Consent agenda items number A through uh, B. Okay. The consent agenda items can I have a motion. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion to approve by Commissioner Camarillo, second by Commissioner Longoria. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Next item. Item six, consideration and action to appoint four members to the Special Needs Advisory Board as per resolution number 2011-030. I'd like to make a motion to appoint Annabeth Bocanegra. Second. Okay, we have a motion uh, and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, do we have another appointment? There's four appointments. Well, everybody gets one. I already did mine. You did yours too, right? I, I made mine last, last week. I don't have one yet. My applicant hasn't submitted her application, so I'll have it next meeting. Okay, I'll do the same, I guess. Thank you. Let's move on to item seven. Item seven, consideration and action to appoint one member to the airport advisory board. Brown. Okay. Our city commission, we'd request that you table this. We are talking with a couple of people, but they haven't had an opportunity to complete the processing of the forms yet. Okay, before verifying that their eligible come before them. Second. We have a motion okay. to table with Commissioner Longoria, second by Commissioner Camarillo. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 8. Item 8, consideration and action to appoint two members to the Brownsville Citizens Advisory Committee. Okay, two appointments here. Do we have anybody? Good evening, Mayor. Um, there's actually three appointments. Um, there's, uh, Mayor, you have one appointment. Um, Commissioner Atkinson, you have also uh, Ms. Cackley. She left town. And uh, uh, Commissioner Samora Belinda declined her position, so you also have an appointment. Correct. I'd like to make a motion to appoint Jason Moody, who has an application on file already. Second. Do we have a motion and a second? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, I'll give you my next motion. Can we move to item nine? Okay. Item 9, consideration and action to appoint or reappoint two members to the Planning and Zoning Commission. 
Honorable Mayor, uh, City Commission, we do have an application in your packet, uh, and this would be um, to replace Mr. Her uh, Sergio Salate, which he no longer wants to serve, and this would be uh, a position by uh, Commissioner uh, Triani, and also uh, Commissioner Adolfo Pereira would like to continue to serve. Then I'll, if, I'll move to do mine at the next meeting, and I'll submit mine. Okay. And I'll move to a real point, I'll open there, too. Thank you. Do we have a motion? Can I have a second? Commissioner, if I may, there was a, an application filed by Mr. Ernesto Solesi, whom I personally met with, and is a viable candidate, so just for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. I'll second the motion for Commissioner Agassi. Can I have a, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. Item 10, public comment. Okay, before we Item 11. Item 11. Consideration and action on resolution number 2011-028 in support of state legislation making pet theft a felony. This goes with the agenda um, we have been promoting in Brownsville. It's a humanitarian uh, agenda. And for some, when their pet is stolen, it's like losing a family member and it's not taken seriously. Uh, nobody has the right to take somebody else's property, and pets are part of the family. And there is legislation. When I was up there in Austin, I found out about this legislation. And uh, I would like to pass this uh, resolution in support of it to make uh, pet theft a felony. That way people will think twice before stealing somebody's pet. So if the, uh, my colleagues here will entertain it and make a motion, we can pass it, send it to our legislators in support of that. Uh, re uh, legislation. Can I have a motion? I'll make a motion to pass the resolution 2011-028. Thank you. Can I have a second? Second. We have a second. Commissioner Gowan. Any discussion? All in favor? Actually, I've got a question. Sure, Commissioner. It's my understanding that theft is determined by the dollar amount of the, of the item. So if you're if your animal is worth more than $1,500, it's automatically a felony. And you would simply equate the value of the animal to a monetary amount, and you'd either have a misdemeanor or a felony amount. And there's already laws in place for theft. You take something, you're gonna get punished, and it has to do with the level of expense associated with the item. So well, if you have a $1,500 dog, you've got a felony. If you've got a $750 dog, you've got a class B misdemeanor. I have a cat I adopted from the shelter, and she's a stray. And, and she's you very valuable to me. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't think you can put a dollar amount on the pet, Commissioner. I think, it's, <laughs> I think, I think you can't put a dollar amount on a pet and what it means to the owner, whether it's a stray or whether it's a $1,500 pet. I think those who uh, love pets feel that they're part of the family and they should be respected as property that does not belong to somebody else and they don't have the right to take it. And here, this is a resolution in support of the state legislation. And I think it's a good uh, message to the community sending through its commission that we're going to take this seriously. So I ask my, my commissioners uh, here to support it. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Nay. OK. Aye. How many ayes do we have? How many nays, too? Two nays or one nay? 
Commissioner Trani? I guess I'll say two. You'll say nay? We have two nays. Thank you, uh, Commissioner, for passing this. Thank you. Next item, please. Item 12, consideration and action on resolution number 2011-029 to oppose state legislation which would preempt the city of Brownsville's plastic bag ordinance. Again, while in Austin, uh, I found out about this legislation and, uh, I, you know, Brownsville has progressed so much in uh, trying to clean up its city, uh, the city and addressing all those issues that are affected by the uh, plastic bag. Uh, the plastic bag uh, replacement ordinance uh, is saving the taxpayers <coughs> money and cleaning up our city. It's giving our city a, uh, a better appeal for visitors who visit and investors who want to consider uh, locating here. Um, this ordinance that the state legislature is uh, introducing would uh, take away uh, local control and uh, there's no benefit from it. <coughs> what they're trying to do is pass uh, legislation that allows municipalities to use plastic bags, but it charges for every bag like a nickel. And that money goes to the state, state uh, coffers to balance their budget, but it doesn't provide any money to clean up our city. I think we made a, a huge leap forward in um, cleaning up our city, protecting our environment. It's a good message of going green. Uh, we were the first in the state, and I think the city of Brownsville uh, should take the leadership in supporting this uh, <coughs> resolution that opposes the state to take control away from the city in dealing with its litter or its plastic bags. So I'm asking the commission to uh, support this resolution so we can send to our state legislatures and our senators uh, not to allow the state to preempt us uh, with our uh, local ordinances. Can I have um, a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Motion by Commissioner Longoria, second by Commissioner Gowan. Any discussion? Yes. One of the concerns that I have is that we have a fee that's in place right now for a dollar for people who go to the store and they don't bring their bags and God knows I forget my bags. <coughs> and I normally pay the dollar. And I went to HEB the other day, and I talked <coughs> to the assistant manager at the Gucci B on 802. Gucci. And uh, I asked them, you know, how many transactions do you do a day? And he looked at me like I was crazed. And I go, well, a thousand? And I started to laugh. And he said, we do a thousand an hour. OK? And I said, well, how many people actually <coughs> buy your bags? Because I know that I buy the bags regularly for a dollar. And he said, I don't know, maybe 10%. So if you figure that they're open 16 hours a day, <coughs> and they're doing that seven days a week, well, you're talking about $16,000 a week. And if you start talking about how this then progresses, what should the city's collections be? If we're just talking about HEB, and you talk about Walmart, and you start talking about all these others, these monies are supposed to flow to the city coffers. It's not supposed to be held by HEB. This is not a, a subsidy to HEB. It's not a subsidy to Walmart for using or, or disallowing the use of plastic bags. This money is supposed to come to the city to benefit programs for a better, cleaner community, because that's something that we all want to do. We, we're very proud of being the first community in the nation to plant something like this, and we want to be a green community. That's why we all voted for it back in January, because everybody up here likes the idea. But when you look at the money that's actually been collected by the city, I think it was about, what, $48,000, Charlie, yes, in sir. the first two months? Well. We have $48,000. Now, if I'm looking at one HEB with 1,000 or 750 transactions per hour, we need to do something about enforcement. Because that's a lot of money for a city who is consistently broke, for a city who is consistently looking for ways to improve just this one ordinance. If you take a reasonable figure of 10% and just say that there's 10 big box stores in our community, you're looking at a little under $6 million a year. 
And if you look at that, six million dollars a year would really benefit our police, our fire, everything, and we'd have a little extra money. We might even be able to throw it in the sports bar. I'm joking. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it becomes a question of reporting and how are we doing that. And if the state is going to actually take the money out, are we better off having the state take the money? Well, probably not. But at least if we're going to oppose this legislation by the state, that we should at least have some sort of procedure in place where we can have an accountability and say how many people are actually buying these bags. I know that I do. And I know that other people, when they come through, they buy the bags. There should be some sort of information provided to us for accountability's sake, at least for accountability's sake, because again, this is our money, yours, mine, everybody else that's sitting up here. Mayor. That's the I'm, only thing I have to let, say. Let me respond to that. Uh, Commissioner Camarillo. Um, Pete, and you, I know you have the figures because you, you forward them to the Environmental Advisory Committee. Commissioner, is it, we're not going to grow six million dollars off, off the, the dollar fee. I can tell you that right now. And the reason why we're not is because not every store is collecting or assessing the dollar fee because not every store is giving, allowing the customer to have plastic as an option. So that's one. The number of stores that do are, I think it's a handful of them, not very many. And the, the HEBs and the Walmarts, they're, they're probably bringing in the bulk of, bulk of that fee. The, the goal is to do away with the fee soon because we should <coughs> and second the funds that are collected should go back back to the public because going? we didn't want to again the goal is to <coughs> clean up the city and I think we have a, a plan in place to tell people you bring in this tire off the street well here's X amount you bring in this trash a bag off of whatever you collected as a family here's X amount you bring in this fridge or this mattress off out of the alley then you get X amount and I think that's, that's where we want to use partial of the funds to, to go to those cleanups. The other part is education and awareness. And then we want to help those that, that don't have bags. We want to be able to provide bags to, again, low income, elderly, and, and, um, and, and social services. So I can tell you, I, I, the, the trend wasn't for the fee to go upwards. It's actually to go downwards because we want to get to the point where people bring their bags. And I can tell you, the stores have told us Every, and again, this group has met once a month, prior to that, almost, uh, almost twice a month, weekly, that that's the focus. The goal is to reduce the, reduce the fee, eliminate it at some point, and, but be able to create and generate all this activity so that there's more awareness out there and we're actually to help people. So that's, that's the focus um, of, of where we're heading. Hopefully soon we'll get to eliminate the fee help people with the bags, and at the same time, bring out the awareness. That Who's collecting the funds right now for the city? This, the stores are providing, are sending the check to the city of Brownsville, goes directly to purchase, to, to uh, payroll, finance, and then finance produces the report. How much are we getting in a a month? Well, the amount that we got last time was $48,000 through February, and one store reported a whopping $3. <laughs> Let's keep in mind that not every, not every store has plastic bags. Uh, I've been to Walmart, I've been to HEB, and the majority of the times, Commissioner, no one is getting the plastic bags. It's normally recycled, or they go ahead and put their goods in their, in their cart. I, I've seen in, this in many cases. Now, the gentleman at HEB, maybe the gentleman didn't know what he was saying, but I, I have, when I go to HEB or Walmart, I don't see that many plastic nope. bags. What's the number, being, Pete? What's the, the number uh, of months? Well, I was just, the number is 48,000 in Every two month months. we're getting 48,000? No, that was for no, two months. Two months. 48,000 for two months. And, where, and that money's going where right now? It goes to an, into an escrow account, and then it's up to the committee to decide how those funds will be spent. And that was part of today's workshop, to come back to the commission to provide direction as to where those, where those money should be spent. I mean, she, she listed options for us to consider. Obviously, we, we want this money, to, you know, some of it to go back. We want to help with the bags, and then we, we want to provide the awareness. Walmart's done away with uh, the plastic bag as a whole. Now, when we go and we purchase our groceries at Walmart, they have those blue recyclable bags. But that money's not going to the city. I checked that already with the general manager. 
And, and I told him, I said, are we, getting, are we getting any money from this? He says, no, you're buying a Walmart bag. You're buying a Walmart reusable bag and paying for it when you forget to bring it. But the city will get no money off of this because it's a Walmart product that's being sold to the customer that forgot to bring his or her bags. So in essence, from Walmart, as an example, Alex, can I see that bag? I, that one that you just had? That's I'm not sure. I, I, I haven't checked with PUB. I, I did check with Walmart, but I haven't checked with PUB. But that H-E-B bag that they sell him for a quarter, the city, it's probably, the, the city isn't getting any money off right. of that. It's no. H-E-B because they printed their logo and they're telling you it's, it's a reusable, reusable bag. bag. Because what they do is they say, we'll sell you our 25-cent bag and you don't have to pay the dollar. And of course, you're going to take the 25-cent bag over paying the dollar yeah. every time. But again, it's still a plastic bag. Okay, okay, okay. But again, you've had I think we're losing, fo we're losing focus of the purpose of well, this. Not, the, not, the, really, the, that, the, not really the focus. It's just that in one of those odd catch-22 ways, you've just given them a way to make more money off of us as, 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 tax, or as, as consumers there in their stores. So mm -hmm. in essence, I mean, that's basically what I don't want to say we've created, but in essence, you've given the, the, the company that liberty to do that. And and I, but, wait a second, wait a second. <coughs> but I think we're losing focus in one, in one aspect. The problem was the litter of our city. Uh, now the city is a lot cleaner. It's costing us less oh. money to tax. Wait a second. It's costing us less taxpayers' money to clean up our city. To, to, to uh, these past few months, we're in a transition period where people are getting used to taking their recyclable bags. So the number will drop as people get educated and used to taking their re uh, recyclable bad bags when they go grocery shopping. Uh, so $48,000, uh, I don't expect the trend to continue that way. But that money that we collect does come back to the city and it is used for, I think, good projects to help the city keep it clean and, and whatever. Mayor, real quick, I think, I think I understand where Rick's coming from because our districts are the poorest districts in, in Brownsville and we get calls by a lot of people and that's why at this workshop today I brought up the fact why don't we make HEB and Walmart use paper bags and they should be free. You go to other, other stores, they give you a free paper bag, you know what I mean? But we're not, we're not getting it here at Walmart and HEB. But look what would happen then. There'd be no incentive for people to take the recyclable bags. So then, why have a plastic? Wait, wait a second. Wait a second. Why have a plastic bag uh, replacement ordinance? If you remove that fee, then there's no incentive for people. But you to can take, take that plastic, that paper bag back. It, it says reusable on it. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, even even if you're not going to charge for it, people won't even take that back with them to shop. They'll say, hey, they're going to give me a bag anyway. So, I mean, we got to think not of ourselves, but of our environment, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I think one of the of problems future, that we have. Wait a second. Okay. And of our future, of our legacy to our children. You know, and the impact, the impact it has on our ecology, our environment. Now, I'm a strong advocate and have been a strong advocate since I was mayor the first time when we introduced, we were ahead of ourselves back then with the recycling. Back then, 20 years ago. 20 years later, we expanded recycling. Now we're dealing with our, the litter of plastic bags. And, you know, this is the future, whether we like it or not, it's coming <coughs> anyway. It's going to be done. We just happen to be the leaders in it, and we should be very proud of it. We need to change the way we do things. Now, our parents didn't have plastic bags, and we managed, and they were poor, and they were poor. We managed. So that's not an excuse. Being poor is not an excuse. It's a cop-out. And I'll, I'll defend very strongly to diminish or eliminate this ordinance. It's working. And we should not change course. Well, I don't think anybody is saying that we should eliminate the ordinance. I think the question is, is can we have accountability as to where the funds go? The money's and coming to the man. The man's coming to right here. There's accountability. We, we, we oversee the city manager. The city manager oversees the finance director. There is accountability well, there. But the now, store, okay, asking him me. for a report excuse monthly, me. that can be done. Well, the thing is, is that if the stores are saying that there's only $48,000 and one store says it's $3, I mean, there's an issue as to the reporting aspect. How are we, how are we auditing that? 
And Pete's over here telling me that nobody uses plastic bags. Well, I think there would be some people in the audience that would differ about using plastic bags. I know I've gone to HEB and I've used them. And I understand Walmart is phasing out plastic bags, and they might have done that in the last two weeks. But when I was in Walmart at 802, they had their own bags, and they still had the plastic bags in the carousels. And you could make the payment, or you could buy their bag. That was two weeks ago. I don't know what they've done as of last week. It simply makes sense that if you're going to charge a fee, that you should have some way to enforce it and make it accountable. And we all did this in good faith, and we've all put our names on it because it passed unanimously. And the reason we did it was because we wanted to be greener and we wanted to be more conscious of the community and our environment and to make the city more beautiful. But I have to say that with TxDOT not having the road clues to come down and clean up our highways, that when you drive down the highways, there are still plastic bags there. And then when I walk out in the front of my office in downtown Brownsville, I'm picking up bags and papers off the sidewalk and out of my front yard because it's still blowing around. It still happens, and we still have to do those things. My only concern here is can we get more accountability on it and do it the right way so that these people don't feel like they're getting ripped off? That's it. Okay. Let me say, let me say this. This gentleman brought up the fact that he buys $300 worth of groceries. Okay. If he can afford to buy $300 of groceries going to the store. It's not your money. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. It's your money that's being used to clean up our roadways. It's your taxpayer's money that we're trying to save, sir. But what I'm saying is this, if he can afford to pay $300 worth of groceries, and the grocery store asks you and gives you the option, either plastic bags or recyclable, whatever you want. If you bring your own, you bring your own. They're only gonna charge you $1 for $300 worth of groceries. If that man can complain about after paying $300 for $1, and that which is invested back into this community to keep it clean. And then I think we're not thinking about our community. We're thinking only of ourselves. And that needs to change. Because if we all love Brownsville like we say we love Brownsville, then, you know, we got to do something. <coughs> if we do nothing, if we do nothing, we go back to the way it was. And the commissioner's right. There's still some plastic bags out there. But what if we had done nothing? It'd be a whole lot worse. What if you've done it right? Well, who's to say your way is right? We're trying to do it the best way we can. We can always revisit the ordinance. We just started, and there's been overwhelming support, which shows that we are moving in the right direction. We can always amend it as we learn. But right now, we're in a transition period, and I think it's been very good, and I think uh, that most of the people will agree with us. Mayor, uh, do I you actually believe that HEB cannot give me a papel bag uh, and like this one at Sears? That's right, I spent $400. They cannot give me a bag? Do what? you actually believe that? You want me to yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can answer, I can answer, I can, I can answer I'm you that. Let me answer you that. The HEB can afford to do there, it. There's ladies okay. there, the viejitas, that they get a government check, and they just barely barely buying their food, and now you want them to support H-E-B paying after H-E-B made a lot of commission and a lot of interest on, on whatever he sold? But what? You ain't got no you, brain, man. You, you, you want me to answer you? You, you, you want me to answer you? H-E-B can afford, H-E-B can afford to give you the bag. That's not the point. <coughs> that if the ordinance was passed, okay, that gives you choices. And yes, H-E-B can take it in its own and give you a bag. But then if it does that, you remove the incentive for people to take their own recyclable bag. Find HEB, find HEB. You know? So then nobody's going to take it. It's going to be back again with the litter. OK, we have a motion. Getting back to the subject matter of support of the resolution to send to our legislators to make sure that the state does not preempt us, does not preempt us in, 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 in taking away local control to deal with their litter, to deal with, with uh, plastic bags. I think we as a commission should support this action by, by, uh, to make sure that the state legislation does not, it does not pass and then it's gonna charge everybody, everybody's gonna be charged on a per bag basis. Well, not on a transaction item, it's a per bag basis. What would you rather, the state legislature, it, it's not gonna fund how to clean your city, <coughs> Charge you for each bag or pay a dollar per transaction or take your recyclable bags and keep your city clean. 
reduce your taxpayers' uh, 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 revenues to clean up the city. Okay, so we have a resolution, I mean, we have a consideration action for this resolution. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? I'm, I'm going to say I'll have, abstain. A motion and a second. All opposed? I, I'm going to abstain from this because I haven't read the legislation. legislation okay, you want one abstention? Any opposition, raise your hand. Okay, it passes. Thank you so much. Uh, I didn't mean to start a big discussion about this, but I think it's important that our state legislatures understand that we sh should maintain local control. Item 13. Item 13, consideration and action on an air service proposal for air service to destinations in Mexico. May I make the motion to continue item 13 for, 20, for no more than 25 days? Okay, we have a motion to continue this item for no more than 25 days. Can I have a second? Second. Any discussion? And that's, with the, and that's with the caveat that there is going to be due diligence done and that is going to be inspected, correct? We have that a motion, uh, as discussed in the executive session, uh, to, to continue this for no more than 25 days. That's what the motion reads. All in favor? Aye. 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 All Aye. opposed? Motion carries. Name. Item 14. One day. Oh. One day. No, it already passed. It come back in 25 days. Yeah, but it's not coming up for action, Greg. Okay, it's not coming up for action. Okay, I, I, as a point of okay, as a point of order. No, Miss Craig, please have a little respect and understand. Okay, understand that this is already taken care of. You will have the opportunity. You'll have more information. <coughs> And you're welcome to come and sit down with management or anybody else, okay? Can we move this to 14? This is continued to 25 days. Yeah. Item 14, please. please. Mayor, apparently, uh, <coughs> Commissioner Toriani noted two seconds ago that during this time frame, apparently, due diligence and the will be made. Uh, and as and you, suggest, and you said, it was discussed in executive session, clearly some action has been taken in executive session, in our humble opinion, and someone has been directed to do something in uh, it appears, um, and if that action was taken, Mayor, this has to be taken in public. No action was taken. No action no was action taken. Can be taken in it, it's it's just uh, uh, what was stated here. The motion, Commissioner Tirani spoke out of executive section, but the, the the motion made here was to continue this for no more than 25 days. Yeah, it's going to be brought, brought back in 25 to, days. Are going to bring other carriers into the discussion? Yeah, 25 days we'll have a discussion. Okay. Are you going to bring in other carriers or can just deal with one, one company? Well, that's subject to if any other carriers uh, apply, you know. <coughs> okay, the item, the item here, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is this. Look, please. I have constraints to work under, okay? I have the exact way. Please, please. But, yeah, but wait a second. I have constraints that we have to work under, okay? Under executive session rules, what's discussed there is privilege because it's competitive and sensitive, okay? Those are the rules. I don't make up the rules, okay? I do not make up the rules. But listen to me, listen to me. It was discussed and it was agreed to continue this item for no more than 25 days. During those 25 days, okay? If anyone wants to submit uh, a proposal, we've always been open to any pro proposal for years. Okay, okay. so just ask one thing: Will the same incentives be available to other airlines that you've offered to uh, Black Frontier? That's executive. Is that's that, a, is that's, that deal that, open? You see, that's 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 up to them to contact our okay. airport director and, and and meet with them and see what we have available, see, what we don't have. See, available. That's a whole idea. That's good though. It's open, it's open, it's open. Right. Anybody's welcome to contact right. our airport director and sit down with them, right. what if the city can offer, what they offer, or whatever it is. So but I cannot discuss could, what was discussed there. Deal. You could get a better deal out of this by doing that. Well, it's up to you. Know, airline carrier wants to come over, you know, okay. talk to our executive director, okay? So, but based, based on the constraints that I have to work under, I ask you all to understand, please, that we do have a motion uh, for for uh, to bring uh, to extend this for no more than 25 days, at which time we'll bring it back 
And if there's discussion needed, you're welcome to come back and discuss it. Right now, there's nothing to discuss other than that we're moving it up for up to 25 days. And I don't mean no disrespect to anybody, but this is the constraints I have to work with. I okay? think what they want to know is if we're going to do an RFP and we're not. And that's why we I'm don't know that. That's, just move to 14. Thank you. You know, uh, all in favor? Aye. We already voted it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All Guys, opposed? You Nay. Do it, and you spilled okay. me. It's all sitting here, and you knew you were not going to even deal with it. Nay. What's that? I'm sorry. Yeah, she's she's saying she saying she wants to know what's going on. Here. Everyone's tired of the back door stuff. That's okay, what's happening. Everyone's out there. We're tired of it. We're tired of it. We're tired of it. Okay. We want to hear what's going on. Pastor, we don't want to pastor, pastor, pastor. Yes. Okay. Do you want to open it up? No, can't. we shouldn't. Do y'all want to open can't. it up? Yes, we can't. No, that's all, to me, to me, it's a, to me, I don't, I don't care. I'm working on. Wait a second. Wait a second. I'm working under the constraints. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm working under the constraints of the executive session. It's up to the commission. If they want to open it up, I'll open it up right now. Yeah. Open it up. 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 Open Second. You have a second. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. I'm gonna. Can I wipe this? Can I wipe? I'm gonna second to open it up. Well, it's already been seconded. But you, yeah, but you need to realize this isn't. It, we weren't trying to hide it from you. It's just we're under. We're gonna open it up for you. Okay. I'm seconding her motion to open it up. Give me just. Well, please give me just one second. Please. Yes. We're gonna open it and discuss it. That's not the problem. We did. It's not that we didn't want to open it. We are under. Our executive session rules not to. Now we're going to open it up. That's fine. But you need to understand that when the motion was originally we, made, it was because we were under the rules of executive session. It's open now. Off? It's open now. But don't try to, don't think, please, please do not think that we were trying to keep this from you. It's just that under the rules, we, the information, please, the information was discussed in executive session and by law. We are required to keep it in executive session. We're going to open it up for you. Okay? But please understand that it was not made to keep it from you. It was because we were under under oath and an executive, please. And no action was taken. Wait, 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 wait. No action was taken. Executive it was session. just. I want to make that very clear. It was just discussion. Okay. And I'm telling you this right now. The dangers of this. Pastor, you got up and yelled. You're going to eat these words. Because I'm going to tell you, you're running the risk of losing an airline. Yeah. That's a risk you want to take. Okay, listen. I am here as your servant. I, I, they, you know, I was under the constraint not to open it up. The commission decided otherwise. I said, to me, it doesn't make, make any difference. <coughs> they decided to open it up, but I'm letting you know right now, it's under the, well, what's the it, peril of losing this it airline. Or not? So we have a motion, a second. Wait, whoa, all in wait. favor, all in favor? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Okay, aye. okay it's aye. Now, let's open it Nothing to do with this. Uh, today's my dad's 85th birthday. Oh, happy birthday. But I have, I'm the last on the agenda. And I was wondering if y'all would just accept my report. It's there. So I can go in. I, I, I may, can we move it up, his can item, up? to table for the next meeting? Because it is a lengthy report. Whatever y'all want. Second. Sorry. Second. It's all right. Sorry, you had to wait. Sorry, Bill. Happy birthday, you, dad. Happy birthday. Thank you. Okay, so the discussion is uh, who wants to lead the discussion? Well, I want to know, first of all, is this legal or not? Okay. What you can't do, hang on, hang on, I'm going to tell you. What you can't do. Hey, I haven't been in jail like you, but. Let him speak. Please. Please. All right. you know, all right, let's, hang let's on. Let's try to conduct this. We're, we're willing, as you saw, to, to open it up as you requested. 
you, you all have been told everything. There's nothing secret. There's nothing secret at all. <coughs> We're just trying to protect the city's best interest. Now that we've gotten it open it up, now let's listen to the guidance okay. by the counselor and respect his guidance, okay? That's all we can go by as mayor and as commissioners. Can I say one thing before you? Sure, go ahead. I want to echo Commissioner Longoria's words that no decisions were made nor can be made in the executive uh, session. What we did and what we've opened it up for is basically informational purposes for you all, okay? And my comment was, is there going to be a review? And there should be a review. I think that a gentleman got up here and explained the basic processes for evaluating businesses. And that's what we're requesting occur within the next 25 days, okay? I don't know that we need to get into the details because there are trade secrets and there are things that in order to protect deals that need to occur. But I think as a community, you need to know that we are trying to protect your interests, okay? And there has been a lot of distrust and a lot of animosity. And I think at the end of the day, simply saying that we are going to put those parameters or criteria in place and we're going to review this and bring it back again after those have been done really should be enough. I mean, we really don't need to go into the details of the contract because if we did, that may cost us the contract. We may be in a situation where we would not get what we want at the end of the day if it's feasible. But until we have all the information, we really can't make a decision on this offer that we have right now. And that's kind of where we are. Now, I think personally, and I'm a lawyer, so my, my thought process may be different than a lot of other people, I think you probably have enough information now to understand that we do want to review it and we want to make sure that we have all of our I's dotted and T's crossed, and, and that's where we are. If we give you a whole lot more information, we are possibly shooting ourselves in the foot, and we're possibly putting ourselves in a position where we could be open to litigation. Yep. And these people that we're dealing with have spent money. And, and hold on a second, and we have to respect that because there is, there is a situation where it, it may be a good deal. We don't know. And until we have all the information, we can't make that decision. And we're saying we can't make that decision today, and we're asking to come back in 25 days after we've been provided all the criteria that we need and let us review it again. And that's where we are. And I, I think really that should be enough information at this point. And in 25 days, you can all come back and see what it is and, and see if we vote for or against it based on the information that's been provided. Getting into the, the minutia, well, that's really not going to do us any good. Okay. And let it finish, please. And we're saying we're not going. And we're saying we're not going to vote on it right now because we need more information. That that's the in between. We can't vote on it because we need more information to evaluate it. We don't have enough information at this point, And until we get all the information, just like it was represented, are you going to get a return on investment? Is this something that we can we can handle as a community? Is this something that we want to do? And is there going to be a market for it? Those are all the things that have to be determined before we can do this. And that's why we're saying we can't vote today. If we voted today, we'd be making decisions without sufficient information. And I, I personally think that a regional air transport to Monterrey and Tampico could be very lucrative because there are people right now who are traveling to Houston to fly to Monterrey. And no, it is true because I have clients that do that. And well, the issue, no, it is the issue. Please let him finish. The, the issue, issue here. Please let him finish. The issue here is to have regional air transport. And is this something that would bring money into our community? And I can't tell you that answer because I don't have all the information. And that's, that's where we are. And the question is, is, can we get that information? Is it going to be something that would convince us to vote for it? Right now, we have two people who are voting nay, OK? And there's everybody else is saying that they want to go forward. Now, get us more information. Maybe we'll change our vote based on something that's out there. Okay. Wait, 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 wait a second. Wait, wait a that's, second. That's wait all a second. I have to say. Before I open it up to discussion, let me dispense because you wanted this information with certain things. That way, it doesn't get it. There's no need to prolong this. One of the issues was Carlos Quintanilla. Does he work 
uh, for char uh, public charters? No, does he not? He does not, okay? So he does not work. Does he have any interest? No, he does not. So that's off the table. That was to ask. That was a concern of yours, okay? One was the due diligence, okay? They did everything, public charters did everything that we asked them to do. We failed to do the due diligence. It was not them. It was us, okay? They went through the same test that uh, Continental and American Eagle did, and they complied with that. We want a little more, which we're asking them for at this point in time, which they're willing to take back to their board, and we're going to take to a BDC. So really, there's nothing to decide on, and there's no <coughs> hidden secrets, and there's nobody trying to pass a fast one on you. We are doing the people's business and making sure the taxpayers are protected and that we're, we're getting something for our money that, that, that's going to help our community because any healthy community needs that has an airport needs passenger air service. And being on the border, we must have international air service. Mayor So this is an opportunity that I think that we all want to support. We just want to get all the facts we want to get all the assurances, and we're asking uh, for a little more extra to satisfy you and everybody else. So if you want to continue discussing it, you're welcome to, and I'll open it up in a minute. Go ahead. And Go I'll ahead. direct this, if you'll allow me, I'll direct this to Craig because he's the one that I spoke to. The action that we took in asking BDC to take these 21 days to evaluate was, in essence, what you were asking for. You wanted accountability. You wanted answers, we'll get you the answers. We're giving BEDC a test to take 21 days to evaluate this. Come back in writing and give us that evaluation. And then in turn, we'll turn it right over to you. But like I told you earlier, the, a the action that was taken in executive wasn't to hide anything from you. We are directing, in essence, through discussion that was partaken in executive session, to direct BEDC to take those 21 days to go and evaluate the company. That's it, so that we can give you the straight answer, the way you want it. We could have made a decision. Miss Maggie, Miss Maggie, in all honesty, what Mr. Quintanilla does with his money or with whoever, in reality, does this. But this body, whether whether that company, uh, well, irregard, irregardless, if. One at a time, one at a time, one at a time. Ms. Look, Maggie, let, if this... Let him finish, Maggie. Well, let most him of y'all are, are supporting wait, a convicted wait, felon wait, to run for office. Please, What's please. The Let's let, let, What's the difference? Commissioner, Commissioner. Commissioner, Commissioner Longoria has the floor. You see what happens? You see what happens when people can't understand and let somebody speak and let them finish speaking? You know, Maggie, you'll get your turn. Everybody will get their turn. Now let the commissioner finish speaking. Commissioner... I can say, let Commissioner those of you, Longoria finish. Those please. of you here present that own businesses, sometimes at, at times the, the workload has gotten too great, maybe a lack of expertise, and because of what you do, you subcontract. I've, I've done it in my business. I subcontract. But within our parameters as a council, we cannot dictate to a vendor who he or she subcontracts to. That is out of our realm. Okay, but so we basically, can express our discontent more. Melissa, you stated that, but this is not pertinent to mine. Okay, what, what I'm getting at is this if this company does or does not subcontract to Mr. Quintanilla, it's really not, not our concern. We, we, we have a deal with that company, we choose to go into it. If it subcontracts to him, that is within their contract, and if there's any repercussions to be to come of it, it, they will suffer it. But in essence, the contract has nothing to do with Quintanilla. I'm, we're not trying to circumvent it. That's just, that's just the way the process is. Wait a second. Wait, let, let's, <coughs> let's maintain some order here. Let him finish. I'm, I'm done. Okay. Commissioner Gavin, please allow me to recognize you before you can speak, and you will be allowed to speak, okay? But let's follow the decor, okay? Please, Commissioner Gavin. I would simply like to re reiterate or echo what's already been said, which is there was concern um, for several things, as the mayor and many of the other commissioners have said, and there were very blunt and, and direct questions asked, and that's why we are asking for more information, because we are trying to be careful. 
not because we are trying to go behind a, behind a corner or anything like that. We're trying to be careful. And I can only assure you that there were very direct questions asked by everyone here on the council. Okay. And I want to reiterate, we asked directly, is, was he hired? Is he getting any kind of compensation? We were assured he was not. His role was that he contacted them and said that Brownsville was poised for international flights and that he would like to see if they were interested. And they came down here to evaluate, they found interest, they got excited, and that's how it came. So if Mr. Quintanilla took it upon himself to promote us, who are we? Who are we to deny that if it's going to help us? But you said we are unable to control whether or not they hire him or not. Why even make that statement if that's no, the case? I made that statement. You made that statement, oh, too. Oh, in, 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 uh, in executive session, yes. Uh, and that's true. I mean, we can't tell your company who to hire and who not to hire. We can't do that. But the question was asked, is he being compensated in any way? And he said no. And they, he said also, in response to Commissioner Samora here, he reassured us there are strict, strict guidelines by FAA who they hire. Okay? But that has nothing to do with us. That has to do with the air, air charter company and FAA. Okay? So we've done what you asked us to do, and I think everyone here is putting a good effort. Now I'm going to. I'm going to open it up. Okay. Those of you who want to speak, would you please stand in the line right there? Okay. Stand in line over there. So I can know how many are going to speak, so I can limit you uh, to so many minutes. May I, so, may I have the floor real quick? Yes. Is it my, Mark, you need to leave or He can do it. How many people are going to speak? I mean, he can do it. He's chair. Okay. How many people? Two, four, six, seven? Eight, nine, ten, ten, ten people so far. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. How many? How, can you somebody count here? Eight. Eight. Okay. Eight people. Uh, you all want to give 20 minutes each, commissioners, or you want to give 10 minutes no. each? Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Don't jump the gun. I'm asking the commissioners. Okay. Yeah. The commission was approved a half ask, hour each. How much do y'all want? I would ask. I would ask that they be that they be limited to no more than five minutes. Yeah, that's, okay. That's fine. Okay. All right. Okay. And so and that's also eight people. That's forty minutes. And also, if you it's would, nine o'clock. If you would, and it will be acceptable that there be no personal attacks, just like it is during during a public comment. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to ask the commission to refrain from responding and listen, make notes, and then respond later. That's 40 minutes. We're alive. That's going to be 10 o'clock. I have a question because you just made the comment about response time. Are we limiting this to five minutes total per person? Or are you saying that per this? Per person. Okay, no matter what questions are on the floor, it's five minutes. That's it. Yeah, but I'm asking you to, to not respond. Let every, each one speak and then make your notes and you respond at the end. Because otherwise, it's going to be a lot. Uh, uh, Long discussion. I would, I would recommend, and maybe I'm, you know, limiting free speech, but I would say that it would be five minutes total per person. And if there's any questions that, that you allow a minute at the end of their you know, at minute four, they get a minute for response time if there's something. Okay, whatever the wish of the commission, I can stay uh, at the midnight, y'all, two y'all o'clock. Out, what, what is the wish of the commission? I just said no more, you know, no more than five <coughs> minutes per person. That's it. And then at On, the end. Uh, Because it could go a long time depending on how. Yeah, ex- excuse me, Mr. Mayor, I might, I might suggest something. Since a lot of these folks may be uh, discussing the same concerns, I mean, there certainly wouldn't be a problem with them among themselves picking two or three representatives to talk f- for a longer period of time if you wanted to. Um, so I we don't ask them to pick out a speaker if, if they want to, but they all want to speak. Okay, so it's going to be five minutes per person, and the commission, uh, I guess, uh, will respond by one minute. Is that what you're saying? Okay. Can I make just one real quick well, comment? I can't limit the commission. I'm sorry. Just one. Why not? I'm sorry. Well, have you do minute. all the time. He may have a minute. He I'm may sorry. Have a minute. Yeah. Come on. I'm sorry. This is just a. Please understand also that this is a courtesy that's being paid. This does not need to happen. It is an action item. 
there is no need or you know to allow for public comment but it is being allowed to to address your 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 wishes and and your concerns so Please take that into consideration. I'm not going to limit the commission per minute because everybody may want to have a say so. We're going to limit the, the five, five minutes. But I would rather you hold your questions, commissioners, to the end, and then we can respond. Yeah, unless you all want to stay here till 4 o'clock in the morning. I'm willing. I'm here. I'm here. No problem. Okay, Mr. Grove, you state your full name for the record. Uh, my name for the record is Michael Craig Grove. Um, I'm here representing myself as a taxpayer and a citizen of Brownsville. Um, I would first like to thank you guys for opening this up. We do know this was not required of you. And secondly, I would also like to thank you all for your service to the community, including Charlie, um, because I know you give a great deal of your time, effort, and energy to an often thankless job. And I know I can be a severe critic, so I wanted to say that, and I do appreciate you guys, every single one of you. With that stated, I want to go with my prepared statement. I'm not going to take the full five minutes. Um, I would like to say that today I approached the commission to express my concerns regarding the proposed deal with Fly Frontera. After reviewing the available details regarding the deal, valid concerns were raised concerning the nature of the deal, perceived lack of transparency, and a lack of an official RFP or request for proposal from the city of Brownsville. Therefore, merits and potential benefits of this deal notwithstanding I respectfully ask that the Commission consider postponing the decision at this time. Now granted, I prepared this speech before you guys took your executive decision vote. Furthermore, I request that an official request for proposal, RFP, be generated by the City of Brownsville and those that are in the know on this and be provided to national and regional carriers <coughs> that could do this. I believe allowing more time to provide an RFP will provide more transparency and encourage healthy competition in the city of Brownsville and our transportation media. This can only benefit the citizens and the visitors of Brownsville and our surrounding area. What we see today and the reason you guys are taking this special action is because you're responding to the outcry from the community and we appreciate that. We are not here to attack anyone not Mr. Quintanilla or anyone else. Now concerns do arise from Mr. Quintanilla's involvement. This is why we became motivated to speak to you guys. Someone who has a RICO fraud conviction should not be involved in dealings with the city of Brownsville at all, ever. It's not a DUI like Zeke Silva. This is RICO <coughs> conspiracy federal charges. How can we possibly deal as a conduit or in any way with someone who has RICO fraud convictions? He's not on the contract. This is not, it's, let, this, let is not speak, this is not a personal contract. I mean, this is not a personal attack on him. This is plainly available data. Mr. Mr. I, you let, told me I could talk yeah, for five do, but, minutes. But you, didn't you hear what I said? He, well, the city's not dealing with it. He, the city is dealing with him. He, no, the city the, is not dealing Mayor, with him. Mayor, is he, is he listening to what he promised us he would do? The did city. He, did he tell me I could speak for five minutes and okay. it? But you're, you're making statements I, that I are not I am not true. making a statement that is inaccurate. Let's check one thing here, Mr. Mayor. And I was not going to go and address Mr. Quintanilla until you guys made it seem like that's a non-issue. It is not a non-issue. It is a concern and it is why 30 people are here. So it is an issue. Let's talk about one thing that we know to be a fact. La Frontera Airlines, this shell corporation that was set up a few months ago as a venue to approach our city for public charters, states on its address that it is based in the residence of Carlos Quintanilla. So wait, we're not dealing with him, but the, the administrative office is in his house. But we're not dealing with him, so let's move on from that. Hey, just, just, no, for no. The, just for the no, record, wait, for, just the, for record. the record, it's a 9,000 square foot home. <laughs> it's a building. It's a building. It's a building. And another 14,000 square foot and home. It has a well, tennis court, too, guys. It's a business. I it's wonder who he business. defrauded to get the tennis court. He lives at the top of the business. They're buildings. They're buildings. I'll, I'll bet you've been there to visit, Charlie. 
Anyways, so I digress since Charlie has disrespected me by talking over me when I was promised five minutes, which have not ended. Our office building. Don't, don't lie. Charlie, you have truly proven your ability to disrespect anybody who steps in your way. So if you would not mind letting me finish. It's not, it's, it's not that was the impression I gave. No, okay. you'll, get, you'll get your five minutes. That's, that's not a I, I don't want to have a squabble with you guys. I came to speak, and then what I understood from the mayor, respectfully, and I acknowledge all you guys respectfully, I've been nothing but respectful, and I'm not receiving reciprocal respect. you got to earn it. So <laughs> let's talk about this. I'm going to finish my statement, and then you can rebut that. The issue with me is not Carlos Quintanilla. He is highly disconcerting. Highly. If you can go on Google and look up anybody, and the first thing that pops up is a RICO fraud conviction, and the administrative office for this business that we're supposed to be doing business with is in his home, that is highly disconcerting. I wouldn't let the guy clean my house. Okay, so I'm moving on. I will restate my situation my purpose and desire for being here. I would like for you guys to generate an RFP. I would like for you guys to evaluate all proposals, not just that which came from one guy who has a RICO fraud conviction, regardless if he is merely a conduit. If he just handed you the piece of paper, I would have a concern with it. So next, I am asking you also to give more fair consideration to Pan Am, who has now invested half a million dollars into Brownsville and was told there are no incentives coming. And yet, he has invested half a million dollars. He does not have a RICO fraud conviction. He can deliver everything that Mr. Quintanilla, well, not Mr. Watch Quintanilla, public Watch charters can. That's what he says. Talk to him about it. Not me. He told me he can deliver. So give him a chance to deliver. He has a year and a half to deliver. He has a year he's and a half? He's had cargo operations for a year and a half. You know how much cargo he's brought? One box. He can't put planes. <laughs> has he gotten two million dollars? I don't care if he's he brought in brought, no boxes. He, brought he didn't get any money. He spent half a million dollars he on a building down here. one piece of cargo by, besides a box. But you're going to give two million dollars to a non-company run by Frank. a convicted don't. felon. And That's a better a idea. A convicted felon for office. To handle our budget. He had a DUI. How many DUIs have you had, Chuck? You Bring it. Baby. <laughs> Who's going to sweep your next one under the rug, guy? What? If, if you didn't have the cops hey, helping you out, you'd have three. You had another fellow. Keep attacking me, Charlie. I can take it all day, guy. All day, I'll stand uh, right here. Of a vehicle? You, have a, you don't have a problem with a burglary of a vehicle, right? Ladies, what? You don't have a burglary Craig, of a vehicle Charlie. problem with him either, right? Oh, okay, so when I was 17, guys, I busted a window on a car. And, and I got, I got uh, a burglary of a vehicle when I was 17 years old. 30 guys. years ago, Mr. Let's Quintanilla see. just 17 years old. Am I asking the city for $2 million? Anybody? I'm going to move. Do I have a RICO fraud conviction? No. So he pulls my criminal record and tries to besmirch me? Have I talked about this? What did I do when I was 17 years old? And please, someone tell me how it's relevant. Please. Tell me. Anyone? Can someone bring up some relevance? Am I asking for $2 million? I don't think so. Okay, uh, so it's Craig, no, no. Craig, <laughs> your, your, five, your five minutes are over. No, because he was jumping your on me. Five minutes, I'm going to finish you, my you, 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 you give me 30 seconds to wrap and I will. You give me 30 minutes. seconds to wrap and I will. Okay, go 30 ahead. seconds. Go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. So here's what I'm asking. RFP, transparency, no more BS executive sessions. No more wasting our money on whatever Charlie Atkinson pushes over everybody. And let's, uh, right. let's go ahead we ask for and no put attacks. this deal in front of other carriers. And then come back to us and pitch it to us and ask us if we want it. Because we don't want it. Goodbye That's and thank you. Can I respond? <laughs> yeah, respond. <laughs> okay. okay. Before you start, before you start, this is a good example of why we do not want yeah. to open it up. Okay? I'm no, no, wait a second. no, no, listen to me. First of all, and with all due respect to Gray, he's speaking and he's well he's not well informed. Okay? He's not well informed. At all. At all. I'm gonna tell you. And I, let me address it. Let me address it. And where where is Larry Brown? Larry Brown? Where are you? Should've Bring me that letter first. by Pan Am. Larry Brown okay? the I'm gonna refute the facts. It's not Pat O'Malley attacking him, but I'm gonna let you see 
what's actually accurate, okay? First of all, it was made very clear that Mr. Carlos Quintanilla is not receiving any compensation. We can't control who they hire, but he's not receiving any compensation. It was made very clear that it was Mr. Quintanilla's initiative that brought this airline carrier who is well respected, okay, and has been checked out. We want more, we want to do more checking, okay, that wants to provide service. Now, this community needs international flights. Third of all, we have been working on bringing international flights for years, for years, and we have offered incentives, okay? We have offered incentives. We can't go up to an airline and tell you we offer you $2 million. That does, that's not the way it works. When Continental came in here, they told us what their break-even point was, depending on their cost. And then we negotiate a deal. So it's not us offering them, it's them wanting to come to our community and risk the investment, and we partner up with them. So we can't possibly tell all the airlines, we're gonna offer you $2 million. That's not the way it works, okay? We have to find out what is their break-even point, and then we negotiate. Third of all, everybody's been given an opportunity for years to come to Brownsville and service the Mexican market. We've contacted Delta, we've given the opportunity to Continental, who does fly to, 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 to Mexico City, okay? But out of Houston. Out of Houston, okay? But to <coughs> come, go out of Brownsville, okay? We've given them the opportunity. We went, I took Larry Brown myself to Mexico City to meet with Mexicana, Aereo, Aereo Mexico, to see if we can get them to come here. I contacted JetBlue to see if they could come here. So this is not overnight deal. We've been working on this for years. And nobody's trying to hide nothing. This was brought, it came to us starting back in October. But they were directed to the airport director and to uh, Jibby to start the process without interference from any of us, okay? So Charter, uh, charter Airlines here uh, went to, to, to the airport and they have an airport committee and they went through that process and they were vetted out, okay? They went through jibbing and they were vetted out, okay? Without our interference, we're not doing nothing. <coughs> the responsible people are doing it. So there's no secret, it was on the agenda uh, with jibbing the information provided to us is what's being provided to you. Other than today we got the contract, but was finally worked out, okay? So there's no hidden agenda. There's, there's nobody trying to uh, uh, ill-spent taxpayers' money. Pan American was given the opportunity to service Mexico, and they have not taken that opportunity. And the opportunity is still there. The door is still open. They need to come to us and tell us what they will, what what they need from us, and if we can provide that through incentives. And they go through the process just like American Eagle, and just like Continental Airlines, and just like uh, Public Charters here. Same thing. They have to go through the process just like them. So nobody's barring them. Nobody's trying to pre 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 prevent them from participating. Okay. Let me tell you the letter, okay? Consideration of passenger flight proposals from Pan American Airways. This is Pan American Airways letter, okay? Request to remove from the April 5th City Commission meeting and an additional three weeks, any, incre incre uh, any request for incentives of ticket subsidies to provide passenger service to Mexico cities, and in specific, the request by Frontera Airlines. Hey, well, this is the letter. No, I'm talking about the letter uh, where, where they say they cannot provide air service for three years. I have a letter, okay, that Pan American writes and says they cannot provide passenger service for three years. Now, is that Brownsville trying to prevent them? And Craig's here attesting to that they can provide the service? When Pan American themselves say they cannot provide the service, they don't have the planes. They don't have the planes to do it. Let me say something real quick. Permission. Just to respond, letter, Larry. Just to respond, you have you have Pan American Airways at the, our airport, prime real estate, paying twenty cents 
a square foot. 20 cents a square foot, where the going rate's eight bucks, eight to 15 bucks a square foot. You ha he's had, the city of Brownsville paid to, re to, to renovate the space that, that he's leasing right now. To this day, and the question was asked to Larry Brown, how much cargo has he brought in in a year and a half? One box. That's why, you know, when he comes to the table, and that's why I called him, I said, what are you doing? What he did, he tried to sabotage this thing by saying, he tried to hire the people. He can't deny because I got witnesses. He tried to hire the people that are trying to get this done. He, he tried to I said fire. I would at the commission. He tried to I would hire. At the commission. He tried to hire these people. Then he went and filed a claim with the state of Texas to take over the Fly Frontera name. I mean, this guy is a cutthroat businessman who's willing to throw out stuff. You know what you need to do? You need to. Hey, you need to be held accountable for the stuff you're bringing to Brownsville. Do it. Work on your cargo before you want to do passenger. That that's my advice to you. All right. Could Zeke, I, Mayor, could I regardless have my five of my minutes? fees for uh, Charlie, he's telling the truth. And there's nothing wrong with the truth. Okay, well, the Pan question American, whether it's the truth listen, or not. Listen, you're not being recognized. Sorry. Pan American, by their own letter, said they could not provide the service. You're still a customer, sir. I, I don't care. I don't care. But we're, we're, we're risking to we're Zeke, we're risking to lose somebody that can't provide the service because this gentleman is promoting he can't, something he can't that's not true. He what he says he can and do. And he's inciting you all to believe that he can provide can, air, air passenger service. We just lost okay. service to Monterey. By the, by they're looking at what's going on around. Mr. Mayor, Nobody's going to do business in Brazil and because they, of the they way made it things very clear. On. They made it very, listen to me. They made it very clear. They may not deliver service from Brownsville to Mexico. They're so would, frustrated with Would Brownsville. you mind saying what date that letter was? And if it was in now Mexico when we went down there, they asked me how long passenger right. service would be available. And at that time, it was three years because there was no incentive, Mr. Mayor. It's $3 million investment, and you didn't offer anything. So you want to hand but out anyway, to right? I don't, I don't want to argue want to that. Let me, let, let me, let me talk. Where your mouth is. Let, Bring let us a proposal. Let, Bring I us will, a proposal. I will. But let me, let me go. First off, I appreciate your extending the time to 21 to 25 days. That does give us the ample time to present to you a proposal. But more than that, it's not about Pan American Airways. It's about fairness and it's about transparency. Send it out to everybody, every air carrier in the United States. Ask them to come. Tell them how much you're going to give them for incentives and have them bid. To tell me there's no incentives means I could not do it for three years because I probably couldn't raise internally from my cargo operation three million dollars. From the one box okay? you brought up? Now, I won't get into you about that, Charlie, because it's proprietary, but uh, where's Kebler? He stepped out. He was in St. Louis with us, along with several other people from the city. They know what we're bringing, okay? I will put the airplanes in the air when I choose, not you, or the city. But I will tell you this, I will be bringing 6.3 billion pounds of freight to here, and Eddie was there. Rico was port was there, but it is proprietary. It is confidential between St. Louis and us. So that's what I'm bringing. And to tell you the truth, I don't have to bring a single aircraft here because this is so huge and I don't have to leave it here. This is huge, friends. And there will be an announcement on it when it's ready and when St. Louis allows us to announce it. But you've got city people that were there in that meeting. So I'm not going to discuss that. What I want you to do is send it out for bids. I don't need to get it. This was not in my plans. I was asked to do this. My cargo plan does not include passenger service at all. So why were you the Council of Mexico asked me. The city of Brownsville asked us, will you consider passenger service? I said yes. And we traveled to Mexico City, we, I'm not to Mexico City, to Nueva Lone, and we had meetings there. And I came back at that time and I asked Larry Brown, are there any incentives to Pan American Airways available? The answer was uncategorically no. Based upon those facts, we went out and we looked at Embraer 5s, 
five embryos from the same person that they're getting it from, Barry Aviation. I've got the faxes. They're legitimate. They have airplanes. They want to lease them. That's all they want to do. Everything is done. Nobody owns airplanes anymore. You go and fly out on Continental, it says run by Ameristar. Guess who has a certificate? Ameristar. It's called an ACMI lease. Aircraft, crew, maintenance, insurance. You lease it wet or dry with without fuel. You don't have to own a single airplane. Well, I've got it. two 737-300 sitting it. in Los Angeles right now that could have been Submit here. Submit your proposal. If, Submit your if proposal. we had done that. That's exactly what we'll do. But oh. I'd like for you to go out to other people. Not just me. Ask Delta. Ask other people you to come in. We've asked Delta. We asked Continental. We asked. Let me tell you, this is how we got Continental. We didn't have passenger service for many, many years for Brownsville. We didn't have it. And we went after airlines and after airlines till we got Continental to do it. This is the way it's done. I assure you, we're the laughing stock of Brownsville. Yep. Okay? And the region. I assure you. I assure you. McAllen doesn't do business this way. And that's why, that's why they eat our lunch. We have a bird in the hand. And because of all the misinformation out there, we're going to end up with nothing. And you may say, no, you shake no. your head. But no, you know sir, you, you'll that's end up bad with for something. the economy for the city of Brownsville. The hotels, the tourism in industry, downtown, the, in downtown the, the investors, the property owners that, 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 that want to come over here because of the insecurity over there that can't travel on roads are going to be impacted. And I absolutely agree with you, Mr. Bayer, but you That's will okay. get, you will you get someone interested if you broadcast this out. Sir, bring, bring okay. your bid. I will be bringing it okay. in, and I do appreciate your you extending it. it for that. You All right? Bring your bid. Please bring your bid. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next person. <laughs> okay, some, some of this has changed. My name is Jim Barton. James Welcome. L. Barton, Welcome. sometimes known as Jim Barton. What, what would we would like you to accomplish in the next 25 days? I wish we could go past the election, but you, that's fine, 25 days. Let's go beyond the scope of just reviewing the current deal and analyzing and, as you say, dot all of the I's, cross all of the T's. Let's again, I know the mayor says that you've already done this for years and years and years. But let's make a, a consistent call to every airline in the U.S. and see what they and see if you can bring them to a round table, and see what they can put on the table. Mention you know you don't have to offer incentives, but let's let's say that you could save the taxpayers of Brownsville five hundred thousand dollars. Would it be worth it to make a little effort? What if you could save two million dollars? What if you could negotiate a deal? with several cities coordinating, working together, and have no taxpayer money. See, put everything on the table. Why be locked into one deal? See, this is what concerns the citizens here. When they see you locked into one deal with one company, it looks like calabasas to them. That's what it looks like. So in legal terms, they call that what? the appearance of impropriety. We're not saying it is impropriety, but that's the way it looks. So let's get beyond that. Here in Brownsville, we have a very thin margin of error with taxpayer dollars and with public trust. We have a, a little bit of a track record in the area of public trust. So are you surprised that uh, people are suspicious, that it looks like a, you're locked into one company and you're not making a real effort to just open up and let all of the airlines in the United States participate. That's what it looks like. It's probably not that. But you know, there it is, the appearance of impropriety. And that's where we stand. So all I'm asking is, uh, I was originally going to say, why the rush? Well, you've taken a little bit of the wind out of my sails there. But let's turn it around and instead of say, why the rush, let's say, let's not just pat ourselves on the back and say, we've done all we could. Let's intensify our efforts, approach every airline, and see if we can get a better deal for the citizens of Brownsville. Maybe you'll end up with uh, Fly Frontera, but maybe in getting other companies into negotiations, you can knock a couple hundred thousand or 300,000 off of that. Isn't that the way the negotiation works? Now, Mr. Atkinson talked about negotiation on Coffeeport Road. He got a couple families together. 
had a little problem there and he negotiated it. Can't you do that with uh, airlines too? Let's get a few of them together. Let's get a better deal for, for Brownsville than this. And then we, won't, then we won't have the suspicion. And then educate us. Let us know what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Let me, let me ask you all this. How many like Continental Airlines here in Brownsville? How many like Continental Airlines that's here in Brownsville? Well, let me tell you, that thinking right there, Continental Airlines would have never been possible. That thinking right there. You know how much the subsidy was for Continental Airlines because we didn't have an air, uh, air passenger carrier here? 3.5 million. That's what we had to do to bring passenger service to Browns to restore it. It's an investment. It has had a major impact on our economy. And that's what this is. And I'm, I'm afraid and I'm sad that I think we're gonna lose this airline because of, we can't understand how these things work. Ideally, what you say in contact every airlines, we've done it. There's no secrecy. There's no hidden agenda. I don't gain nothing. None of these gentlemen gain anything. None of us. We're just trying to bring you economic development. Larry, I want you to come up here. Here's our airport director. And I want you to listen to him. And for you and for some, Hopefully, it's, 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 it's what he says you will, you will take to heart. And for some, maybe it's not enough. But I assure you, we have been trying. Please, Larry, explain to the audience here what we have been doing to try and bring an international airline. And for how long? For 25 years? Okay. First of all, the city of Brownsville, as you know, is an international city. And the fact that there are five airports within the close proximity to here, okay, including airport in Metamoros, airport in Harlingen, airport in McAllen, airport in Reynosa, means that this business is very competitive, not only amongst airports, but amongst airlines for air service. What we do is we, in a professional manner, approach airlines by, first of all, attending conferences. Those conferences are called Jumpstart Conference. There are also conferences on an international nature that we attend, and typically the way these conferences go, you're given about 15 minutes to sit down face-to-face -face with an airline, put your proposal on the table before that airline to try to suggest to them that Brownsville is a good place for them to come and do business. We typically will go to one of these conferences and meet with 20 25 different airlines, okay? The most recent, the city commission has a copy of a synopsis, bullet point synopsis, that describes the most recent discussions we've had. Those include discussions with airlines such as Volaris, such airlines as Mexicana while it was still in operation, as well as the other airlines, uh, Click, for example, as a part of what was originally a part of Mexicana, and the other airlines that currently serve, for example, other competing airports, okay? terms of potential international service. What we then will typically do once an airline decides it may be interested in following up, we then will typically sit down with them, describe the airport that we have here, the community we have here, and what the potential market is. That's not staff doing that just all by themselves. The city of Brownsville employs a, an air service consultant that is one of the best in the country, if I may say, their name is Sabre, airline consultants. The air, airport operates based upon an airline service development strategy that was developed by Sabre. It was developed about six years ago, okay? And that airport development strategy is what led to Continental Airlines, for example, which had three round trips per day in 2002 to expand its operation to the Houston hub, so now it has between five and seven round trips per day. That increased the access to the Houston hub market. Second. That airline strategy also provided a justification, a market analysis, if you will, that was presented to American Eagle to demonstrate the fact that there is a market for people to fly to the DFW airport as a major, major hub and be able to expand its operations from the major hub literally to anywhere in the world. The third part of that airline service strategy, as was pointed out, is a continuation of the efforts in order to try to obtain service into the various different Mexican markets that we know we have. When you consider the fact that a flight from here to Monterey 
is about 45 minutes, on a, typically on an RJ. There is a market for the service, and the market, due to the change in circumstances in Mexico right now, we know has increased. We know that because we talk to people. Not only that the airline cons consultant does the analysis, but also we talk to people. For example, there is an airline, it is an air taxi service called QDI, that has been operating back and forth between the airport, providing service with nine passenger, you know, small aircraft to in Monterey. People are using that service quite regularly. It's very busy. The number of aircraft that are at the airport in terms of GA type aircraft has increased about 238% within the past six months. People are using aircraft as opposed to having to drive, okay? Those are people who potentially will make an investment in this community, not just in terms of the day investment, but in terms of finding a place for themselves to live in the community. And when you consider such things as the fact that you can stand in a control tower at the Brownsville Airport and look to the east, and you can see South Padre Island. You count the floors on the condominium at the end of the causeway. You turn around and look south, and you see downtown Matamoros, okay? And the simple fact of the matter is this is an international city. It has been an international city since 1929 when Amelia Hart and Charles Lindbergh cut the, cut the ribbon dedicating the airport. It's an international airport. That's why it's called that. And so what we do is take those various different factors associated with this community and tell those to the airline, provide them with the studies that demonstrate the fact that there is a market here for their service, and then invite them, if they would like to, to come and give us a proposal. I will also tell you that as far as my staff and myself goes, we're open to anyone, any airline, that wants to provide a proposal for service out of this community to do business here. We believe this is a good place to do airplane business, and we intend to pursue everything we can do to make sure that continues to happen. You know, if it comes down to, if, if, if the city commission directs us to, you know, invite proposals, we'd be more than happy to do that. We'd be more than happy to consider those proposals. No problem. We're all about increasing the airline service and carrying out the strategy this, this community and this city has paid for the development of. Okay? Thank you, Larry. As you can tell, they've been working very diligently over a long period of time. We have an international airport, but we don't have international flights. And, you know, I don't know what more you could expect from us in trying to provide international service. If y'all don't want it, that's a different story. But I think it's a sad day for Brownsville that if we don't make the effort to reestablish international flights, it's good for our community, it's economic development, and you know, they've done what they can do. I would just like to know one other thing if I can, as was pointed out, air cargo service is also extremely important to the future development of the city as well as, as well as the airport. The fact that you have a nexus of such things as the Port of Brownsville, the international bridges, the airport and so forth, makes for an ideal situation to potentially develop additional cargo business now, not just air cargo, but shipping and so forth. And I can speak as a former director of planning this city, we have something that's unique here. We have the ability to make that work. We just have to find a way to work together to do it. You know, uh, the, thank you, thank you very much, Jerry. You does a good job. Thank you very much. Uh, anybody else who's going to speak today? My name is Dad Barrera, and I'm an educator, not an aviator. I'm not a, an a, analyst on aviation. So I have questions that I'm sure that the people have. Mr. Mayor, where there is rumors, there is some fire. That's what we're looking. Somebody mentioned that it's a shell corporation. Have you looked into that, Mr. Mayor, please, Pat? I understand that Mr. Quintanilla, I don't know the man, is uh, an ex-con. Let's put it simple. Okay. That, he's not, this is not an issue. A, Quintanilla has nothing to do with the city. That went, that, okay. All he did was bring the airline. Listen, to, listen everybody. All right. I, I don't think it's getting through. All Mr. Quintanilla did was invite the airline to come here and look at us. Okay. That's that all went. he did. Maybe it's, that's, that's my part. I'm wrong there. 
Okay, so Mr. Cania, Mr. Quintanilla is not also in, is not a professional in aviation or finances or analysis. Okay, that one. He has nothing to do with it. If there's a um, Pan American Airways uh, company that wants to come in, get the company to come in, rather than something that is mysterious. Okay. Pero mira, on, another thing, Pat. Mr. Quintanilla, somewhere along the line, is going to be handling our money, taxpayers' money. No, I'm wrong there. Okay, I'm, okay, that bueno. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I'm just asking questions. Okay, why why is Frontera asking us for money ahead of the the project? Why is and if they're good and solid, yes, to el otro, and they're the most famous uh, from Terra so forth. Oh yes, get, get Mr. Who, who runs the television station in Mexico, como se llama? What's the name of that man? Escarrega. Escarrega. <laughs> to give him some money para to start the, the, the flight? Why ask us peons down here? Pan Am's gonna ask you for the same money, Jag. Okay. Pan Am's gonna ask you for the same incentives. They're all going to do it. It's part of it's part the business. Air service that nobody wants to provide. <coughs> if you want international flights, you got to invest because you make your money at the other end, Dag. You make your money at the other end with hotel occupancy, a sales tax receipts, creating jobs, bringing investments. That's how you make your money. You recoup your money that you invested to bring an airline. Bueno. Now you're under the assumption that not one ticket will be sold in two years. I hope not. Okay, yeah, because that's where the $2 million comes from. It's a million dollars per year. But that's if no ticket is sold, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. We guarantee 21 tickets. If they sell, and we reconcile monthly, and, and if they sell 20 tickets, we're only responsible for one. That's it. We're not responsible for a million dollars worth of tickets. And we have a six month, six month, option to get out of the contract. In six months, we review, we don't like it, we can get out. Uh, so that's an option that's on there. That's good. The, the, that's you good. know, this is nothing secret. It's just the way, you know, you want, you all want us to get permission from you to do everything. That's what you're saying. Okay. Okay. And then, and then we're not going to get nothing done because I, I assure you, you all won't even agree amongst yourselves as to what you want to see and what you don't want to see. Okay. That, that, that's what this is. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. No, what is it? That's what it's all about because it's been months in the negotiation and taking place. Then it's brought. Then it's brought at the right time before you and your informed as to what's being done. Okay, that's where you get the input from you. But we don't. We didn't even know. Okay, the final outcome of the negotiations. It takes time to get there. It takes time to find out what the break-even point is. It takes time what's going to cost uh, to marketing. It takes all that time. Nobody's, you know, if you want us to come to you before we even get started in a deal, nobody's going to want to do business with us. Nobody. Nobody. But that's okay. what you all want. Okay, Pat. Now you have given us a lot of information that we didn't know, Pat. Now you know that quiz those guys. Ask him for the money. Yeah. Ask him for uh, uh, letters. Ask him for, ¿cómo se llama? Probationary period. What and do you you're doing that. He said it right there. What do you think we've been doing? Sí, pues no sé. No, but you, you I don't know, Pat. Rumors. You all go by rumors. Sí. You come to conclusions. No. Yeah. Okay, but I always said, listen, listen to me. Listen to me. I always said, all of you are welcome. We have the city manager here. We have the airport director there. We have people on the airport committee. We have people at Jibig. Why did nobody take the time to go ask at Jibig what's going on? Go yeah, ask Mr. At the airport, and it's open meetings. Go to the airport and ask them what's going on, or come to the city manager and say, I want some information. I hear these rumors. Andale, okay. okay. So, you know, no, you all go by the rumors and you make it factual. You make it that it's true. But if you come and talk to the city manager, <laughs> the city attorney, the finance director, come and talk to me, come and talk to the commissioners, you find out that we're wrong. We're wrong sometimes. But you do the damage. You do the damage. No, no. The, 
we just no, we're risking of losing an airline. We're, we're risking losing an airline. That's I think we do. I I hope really, Pat and commissioners, honorable commissioners. I hope that I'm wrong because I have so <laughs> many questions. No quiero que me my pockets que que me saquen dinero de la bolsa. You know. I don't want money taken out of my pocket. We want to put money in your pocket. <laughs> we want to put money in your pocket. You, I hope so. You know, you know how? By creating jobs, people pay taxes, people buy homes. It, it, costs, it costs less money uh, to, to tax people so we can provide public service, build streets, you know, do the things that you want us to do because our tax rate is too high. You know, we, you know, this helps us keep our tax rate down. Okay, okay? Pat. Now, I'm very passionate, as you all very know, about any issue in the city of Brownsville. Don't take it wrong. Please don't take it wrong. But I'm here to serve you. If y'all don't want an airline, okay, I will carry you that out. No, we want and I'm sure one. the commissioner will, is willing to do the same thing. But I don't think I don't think that's what you want. I think you do want an airline. Yes, we do. Okay. So, but you gotta trust your commission. But a good one. A good one. You gotta one. trust your commission <laughs> until you're proven wrong. <laughs> take the time to come and talk to your city manager before you believe what somebody's telling you and you believe to be true yeah. or before you believe something that you read you think it's true or yeah. before you believe something that you hear and you think you heard something when it's not that way get the facts that's what we should all do they're, the they're here because they believe in the cheese man they don't know the facts that's okay. the problem thank you, thank you. okay Doug. thank you very Dad, much on the past the past four or five months i've been working on my rental houses I cannot get come every, every, every minute. But you say get but thank you anyway. Get thank cheese, man. Okay, next person, Z. Oh, I let this guy go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> Charlie, keep quiet. <laughs> go ahead, Z. Please. Mr. Armada, Mayor, Commissioners. My name is Ezequiel Silva. Um, I own a trucking company. It's transportation, whether I haul uh, anything that's uh, dry or either you, you we haul uh, people. It's still transportation. Okay, I've been doing this since right out of high school with Leesway Delco. I did a lot of charters, and then I understood that a charter for it to land cost the company $10,000. Well, Leesway Delco is no longer here. It left and became Penske, and it's all in Los Angeles, Texas, okay? So it moved away from us. We have a foreign trade zone that is not being utilized to its fullest. We have an airport, as we all know, that is international, which is great. We have the Port of Bronzeville, we have the island, we have Matamoros, and we have Bronzeville, and we have surrounding cities. I'm not in, in, uh, in disagreement on growth. Don't ever get me mistaken. I understand that we need international uh, airlines, airways, excuse me. Mr. Gonzalez over here a few uh, months ago did address the commission and says that industrial, industry, industrial jobs is what we need here in Bronzeville because industrial jobs create more paying jobs, okay? I believe you addressed the city. We are after a company which no guarantees that there's gonna be that much coming in. I understand that there was a study done Studies are studies, okay? But there's no guarantees. When I started my business in 2007, I had $10,000. In three and a half years, I've turned those $10,000 to 3.5 million in gross sales, okay? That is not an easy task. But no one gave me a penny, okay? I earned it. My marketing was done by me, okay? No one gave me a penny. Nobody gave me a parade. I believe when Pan Am came in, he was applauded. He was applauded by all the commissioners, and they were told that they were gonna guarantee us in the first few months, 20 jobs. And whether the first year or a year and a half was gonna give us 100 jobs, okay? <laughs> Apparently, none of that has happened. He's saying to give him time. He's still paying rent, okay? Competition is what we're asking for. Now, if we do not allow other companies to bid, Okay, and we have an existing airline here. We have an existing airline, okay? If we start bad-mouthing the people that are already here to leave to bring somebody else, what's gonna happen to the other person that comes in or the other company that tries 
to come in. Are we going to bat them because they did not present what we were expected from them? Now, we're giving monies to companies. I understand that you say that that's the way that we're supposed to do business. But what other businesses are we going after? Are we just going after a airline? Okay, I'm not even gonna mention the person that's behind it, okay? Because apparently this person is not relevant to this conversation. But if an airline with that kind of money should be able to stand on his own two feet, and if they want Bronzeville, why don't they give us an incentive instead of us giving them an incentive? We have the capacity here. We have the island, we have Matamoros, we have Bronzeville, we have Arroyo City, we have a lot of places they could come, okay? We have a lot of, we have the zoo, Gladys Porter Zoo, we have a lot to offer. They need us as much as we need them, okay? It has to be given both ways. You gotta give some to get some. And sometimes not giving it all away at once is the best way to do things. And I'm just asking, if Pan Am wants a fair shot, which you already said you're going to give it to them, and I applaud you guys that you're all going to give them an opportunity. But it's also very essential that we give other airlines, okay? Not everybody is as informed as we should be, okay? Maybe that's because things are done in a certain way. And I, hey, we didn't set the rules, you said it, right? You didn't set the rules, the rules are already set. But if there's this much concern, then maybe we should think about it, and that's what you're all gonna do it, but is 25 days sufficient? That's what I'm asking, is 25 days that much? I mean, if we do not give them 60 days per se, is that one of the agreements that Flat Frontera gave us, either you make a decision with it now or we're out of here, and they're gonna go to McAllen? I was on, somebody said something, now I'm not trying to base and, and, and point fingers, but said that they had also addressed McAllen, and the reason why McAllen did not wanna take this opportunity was because the cartel, the Mexican cartel, was asking the airline to give them a, a names of every person that was on that plane. Okay, are we going to have that type of problem also? If I may sir, Zeke, uh, first of all, your venture is a private venture. <coughs> Say what? Your venture, the trucking business, that's a private venture. This is a public venture with private. Money's money, still money, sir. Sure. We have an airport. We have an airport. That's public. We need to sustain that airport. And the more business we generate, whether it's cargo, passenger uh, uh, flights, that helps us uh, operate in the black. And okay. not, not have to use taxpayers to subsidize it, okay. So the private and public come together to take a risk to establish international flights. If we were to follow your formula, and I'm a straight arrow, I mean, I'll tell you the way it is, whether it is, and I'm not- I don't expect you, any less. Okay. It, it, to use your formula, we would never get, we would never gotten Continental Airlines here. We would never gotten American Eagle here. We wouldn't have an airport, my friend. Really? We wouldn't have really? an airport. How do you know? Because for years we didn't have American Airlines and we had to provide a subsidy of 3.5 million. The airport director just said that you guys have one of the best, okay, the best in the world. Get that way. Or the it wasn't country. that way. Okay, he says that he has the best. Why did we have to hire, or why did Quintanilla have to come in here and bring an airline when we already have somebody that were, uh, it's on the payroll that wasn't able to solicit their own airlines, or our own airlines, or an airline? You're misinformed. No, I'm not misinformed. He, he said it right now. He, doesn't he have says that he has he the have best plan, consultant. He doesn't, he doesn't have the plane, Z. Well, how, what do you mean he doesn't have he the doesn't planes? Have the he doesn't planes have the planes by their own admission, their own company. They don't have the planes. They can't provide the service. No, no, they no. Wait a minute. No, no. I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about Pan Am. I'm talking about us. He says that we hired the best consultants to go out there and solicit business. Why did we? Why did Mr. Cantania have to bring somebody in? Because we weren't. We weren't able to deliver. We were failing. So then, do we need to replace the people that are no, not no, no, able no, no, to no, deliver? No. The opportunity. It's like you know somebody that we don't know. We welcome you. Bring them in. We welcome you. I mean, we could all use all the help. Why are you holding it against somebody for bringing somebody in? I'm not, I never said I'm in. holding it against them. Okay. Okay. All but, I'm but, saying but is that back to, going if back we, to what have, you said, we have different airlines, sir. But, but what, going back to what you said, you, you know, yours is a private venture. You can't compare it to the city. If, if you're thinking, we would have never had Continental Airlines. Investment is investment, sir. No, it's Investments not. are investment. I choose to invest here in Bronzeville. I chose to create jobs. 
Okay. Well, the airport the airport could not afford to buy an airplane and maintain and service. Uh, How much does an airplane cost? Seven million? Five million? We're not in the we're not in the air flight business. A two propeller U Cessna or what? Zeke, we're not in that business. We want carriers to come here. We're not going to get in the flight business. So no, what are we offering them? Real quick, Carlos Quintanilla is here. Let it. If you want, a lot of people want to. Am know I through yet, sir? About. Let him. Let him talk. Uh, I, I, I would rather you sit down. I would like the opportunity to respond. Jeez. Did I disrespect anybody here? You said, wait, 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 wait. Okay, I will give you the opportunity. The commission opened it up for discussion. We got discussion. So we get to interrupt him also? Wait a second. Oh, we're going to be able to Your interrupt five minutes him? Are up. Let's have five minutes. No, no, no. You're not done sit yet? Down, sit, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Okay. Dino, you're next. You're next. This is why I want to open it up. Y'all want it, so we got to open it. It's just, it's just the, owner, the owner of the charter company is here. This, this is a good impression. This is a good, this is a, this is a good impression. Okay, stop it, stop it. Carlos, Carlos, stop it, stop it. Let him speak, let him speak, let him speak. Okay, sit down, Craig, Craig, sit down. Sit down, we, let's, we need some civility here. We need some civility here. You know, I didn't want to open this up because of this. Now, we opened it up, please be civil, okay? Please be civil, okay? Okay, allow me and give Mr. Uh, uh, Dino uh, uh, the courtesy to let him speak. Uh, the only one that can interrupt is the chair, okay? And I will recognize uh, those that need to speak. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Dino Chavez is the name. Yes, Mr. Chavez. Um, j just to be clear here, Mayor, I, I don't have a dog in the fight. I, I could care less whether you go with, with Pan Am or whether you go with uh, XYZ, ABC. I really don't care. What I care about is our tax dollars being wasted. That's what I care about. Number one. <coughs> so the gentleman that was here with Pan Am talking about, you know, that he didn't get a chance and you said he did, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I don't know whether he did or not. But, I mean, that's his fight. Okay. Uh, the guy is here with Quintanilla that's supposedly working out of the goodness of his heart because he's not with the company, etc. I don't care. That's, not, that's, that's for him to fight for his business. I care about our tax dollars. Period. Period. So let me ask you guys point blank. <clears throat> Who approved the Titan deal? Did you do it? No. Did you do it? How about you? You? Anybody here? Anybody do it? Okay, so everybody's innocent. All right, who approved the Taylor Aircraft deal? Did you do it? How about you? 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 I wasn't here. Anybody here? You did it. Okay, you're guilty. You're guilty for not for not doing your homework. Really? That's no, 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 no. Really? Let, let, let no. me, let me. I'm, 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 I'm not. I didn't know that you had it. That you had it. Were part of this deal, but basically, you didn't do your homework. And that's all we're asking you to do. But doing the homework doesn't guarantee success. Let, let me finish. Let me finish. Okay? It, it doesn't guarantee anything. No. It doesn't do anything. Um, a little while ago, you had... Uh, do you know, can I, can I make a real quick comment? When I made that decision, that was brought to me by Larry Brown. Okay? And Larry Brown has since answered for that. And because it was a failed venture, he wasn't reprimanded. He was just told, you know... We don't wish to seek these kinds of ventures in the future. But as an elected official, we are advised by staff. This is our job. This is what we do. This is what we come and do as a public service for you. But we have people on staff, our directors, that make these kinds of decisions. And we are informed. And we make the questions and we take the time out of our schedules, out of our families, to be able to go and get informed and come and make the, the best decision that we can. Now, I might deviate just a little bit, but let me make this statement. Once again, I go back to what I told you at the beginning. If we have a public hearing on an issue, by all means, line up all the way to the street and we'll listen to you. You're welcome. We have, this is an action item. 
like it or not like it, you have elected us. You elected us to the position that we hold. And when it comes to an action item on the agenda, we make that decision with your trust. And hopefully, God willing, making the right decision on your behalf. We're entertaining the right for you to come and speak. But once again, I mean, we keep on going back and forth, back and forth with these discussions. This doesn't need to happen. You trusted us. You voted us into office. Maybe you might vote me out. Maybe you might vote some of us out. That's, that's your prerogative. That's your decision as the electoral body, as the people to put us into office. But while you have placed us in office, when we have an action item on the agenda, it is that right that you have given us to make that decision, right or wrong. Public hearing, please line up. Action item, that is the right that you have given us. Please trust us to make the right decisions. Not all of them are going to be right. Not all of them are going to be right. Please, your mother was up here with us, and she made the decisions also on that one, and it failed. You know, there's success. So, there's plenty of yeah. There's plenty of successes, and and like in in any venture, there's always a risk. There's nothing guaranteed. On this particular venture, it was pretty well vetted out. We want some do more. Of it. We're going to do more of it. But that doesn't guarantee success. But we're doing it in, the, in the good faith, based on all the information we have. And all I can say is that I know whether it's Taylor Aircraft or whether it's Titan or whether it's, it's this deal or whether it's Continental Airlines or, or whether it's whatever. You know, this is our community. And I think we all want to succeed. But you know something? It seems like we're eager to fail. We're eager to undermine ourselves. Because most of what I've heard here is bad information that could easily have been dealt with by contacting our city, like I've always said. Or us. Contact our city manager, contact our airport director, contact me, contact the commissioners. Allegations were made, attacks are being made. We're the laughing stock. <coughs> Because you know, we don't take the time to get properly informed, and we attack, and we're undermining ourselves. Can like I, I get, said, can I just had, say, I'm sorry. We had a bird in the hand for years, for 20 years that I know of, we've been trying to get an international flight. And we have this bird in the hand, <coughs> and yet you all find something wrong with it. Doesn't make sense to me. Can I tell you when something? When will we get another bird in the hand? I don't know. Can I tell uh -huh. you something personally? Personally, out of the information that I've received from this, what I read from this company, me personally, my vote, I think this is a great company. Me I too. do. I do. I, do I think that what they could do for this community would be great. I just met the gentleman today. He's sitting there. You know what? My opinion, of course. Okay? It's a good company. He's flying out of here tomorrow. He ain't coming back. It's a solid company. Okay. He's not coming back, and we you, lost out. You can go on the internet and check them out. If you had taken the time <laughs> before you came in here, like I told you, I you mean, would be better informed. Yeah. Uh, and they're easy. They're easy to find on the if, internet. If I, <coughs> if I could finish, please. Please, Rick. Um, not, nothing. Nothing against you no. personally at all. No. Um, I, I don't think I've ever met you or anything. So yeah. nothing personally against you. Yeah. I, I think that um, all of us just want transparency. You there know, is transparency. I, no, 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 there's not. No, there's where, not. Where, where, where have we failed? Tell Bad. me. Tell Bad. me where we failed. We, we have asked for information. <coughs> I mean, when, when point did blank. You, when did you come here for information? Didn't, didn't we have a dialogue with not just me, but several of us with you on Facebook the other night? And no, the, the information, you, you couldn't give it to us. You couldn't you give it to, to us. You couldn't to give it to us. You the airport director. I'm not the airport director. I'm not micromanagement. <laughs> there, there, there we go again. You're, 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 you know, you could have gone to BDC's meeting, which is yeah. open, and you didn't go. You could have yeah. gone to GBIC's meeting. It's open. You didn't go. You yeah. could have gone to the Brownsville Airport Advisory meeting. You didn't go. Well, how many chances do you need to get the facts straight? Can, Dino, can, you, can you provide us with a report today? Oh wait, 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 Dino, and everything I said on Facebook is true. Okay. okay. If it's true, okay. then <coughs> it's, it's, your your disagreement to provide us with the information no, is no, quite no. clear. Hey, look at my Facebook. I invited you to come to the meeting. I invited you to go seek management or mm -hmm. get your information. You have failed, sir. 
I'm, I'm here at the meeting, paid. Pat. Just you like I told you I was going to be at the meeting. You come here and complain and say there's no transparency? You have to take personal responsibility for yourself. And I'm not trying to attack you, you know. But you, I I'm understand. Trying, I'm trying to make sure you understand. You're attacking and you're saying that we're, we're not being transparent when you have to take personal responsibility. You want to know about the subject matter? We cannot read your mind. You need to seek us out. Go to the airport director, go to the city manager, go to BDC, go to Jibic, go wherever you need to go to get that information. Go to the <coughs> website. You would have gotten a lot of information from the website. Pat, so I went to our mayor to ask for that information. Sir, I, I don't I'm know not, who else I can I'm go. Not, I mean, I you're, you're our mayor. You're, you're supposed to have that information, aren't you? Yes. Sir, I mean, you're here voting on the matter. Aren't you supposed and, to have that data? And I'm getting the data to make well-informed decisions. But okay, I'm to respond to you. Oh, okay. Wait, okay. Wait a second. Listen, listen, okay. To, listen okay. to what you're saying. I'm supposed to give him information. No, not just no, me. No, no. Everybody no, here wants I'm his personal errand boy. Because now you want information that's different from him on a different matter. I'm your personal errand boy. Is that, what, is that what I am to you? Because, look, I'm not your personal errand boy. I'm here to represent the best interests of our community, as we all are here. Okay, but you have to take personal responsibility. You want information, the door's open. Come and get it. We try to get as much information, and we do our homework, at least I try to do, to make a sound decision in the best interest of our community. But sir, okay. you're failing yourself. Let, let, let's assume you are making the best decision for our community. Well, not anymore, it's gone. Let, let, let's assume that you are, period. Let's assume that you are. Um, you, you had a very eloquent uh, and very informed gentleman here a little while ago. Uh, Larry Brown, Brown, Mr. Young Brown. Young man, where are you? Mr. Step Brown. up here. He he is. Uh, <coughs> I mean, he knows more about airports than I'll ever ever you ever sit know. Down with him. And and I respect that. Sit I respect I respect that. But Mr. Brown, you you, you made a mention and, and you, you you talked about all of the things that uh, you've attempted to do, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and man, I, I appreciate that. And I, I really appreciate each one of you taking up your time and, and serving public, et cetera. But how many other companies were offered $2 million? First of all, I think it's important to recognize there is no <coughs> pot of money of $2 million that sits around waiting for proposals. That doesn't exist. The way this works, we invite airlines to look at what our market is. The airline will make a proposal. We will then take that and bear in mind, proposals can vary according to the type of equipment, the type of route, the amount of costs associated with fuel, and on and on and on. So we can't say that there is a $2 million pot of funds available right now for any particular airline. What happens is the airline looks at the market, it determines whether or not it can serve that market, it then prepares a statement as to what it would take for us to be able to participate with that airline. We then take that and we look at what we can do. If the airline is just looking for something like, you know, a waiver on landing fees, that's not a big deal. And it's not a big amount of money. When it becomes more complicated, we then have to go through the process and deal with such things as the potential for GBIC, the potential for city, and other communities as well to participate since they're a part of the market, which is what the city has been in the process of doing with this proposal. And that is, we already have started such things as discussions with South Padre Island. In fact, South Padre Island was represented here earlier. South Padre Island, Port Isabel, and all the entities that are around here that would benefit from this service. So everyone can participate in making this happen. But it's not a done deal yet, okay? There is not that pot of money, if you will, that exists yet. The, the proposals by airlines are based upon what they can provide to meet the market. And so the cost associated can vary substantially. So there is no one thing. I will also tell you that uh, the, the format that was used for this proposal was basically a standardized format that uh, American Airlines actually developed. And that was what the, the company submitting the proposal used as a format. They looked at such things as how much it costs to fly the plane over a given period of time, what they would expect the market to be in terms of the number of people that buy revenue-paying tickets on that airline. They compare that with such things as 
their total cost per segment mile. Then they look at how much is it going to cost for us to do this service and to put our planes there and put our planes at risk. And then is the community willing to share that risk in some fashion so that the community can benefit? As was proposed by Dr. Malkey and so forth to the City Commission, you can have a copy of this proposal. An analysis was done associated with the value of people coming to Brownsville and our market area, visiting here, spending their money here. What does that do for the community? It doesn't just create revenue for the airport. It's investment into this community that creates new permanent jobs. They spend money here at restaurants. You know, the restaurant provides the food. People pay for the food. That money goes into the economy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And those are simple examples. But that is what it takes in order for the community to grow. The, the airport provides a service to people who want to come here and who want to leave from here. And that's what we do. And that's how we go about preparing that proposal, if you will. There is no $2 million pot of money. There is simply a proposal that has to be analyzed, determine what it would take to make it work, then pursue the funding for it. And the money can vary widely in terms of how much it would take to do it. Did, Did I, I answer the question? Has Dino ever contacted you to try to get informed about the airport? I've never had the pleasure of meeting these gentlemen before. Has anybody here, Craig Grove or any of them, bothered to contact you? <coughs> Not unless I missed a phone call. Let me ask you Steve, something real quick. Steve, Steve, to say you want to make a Let me ask you something real quick. Oh, in, in, in your 20 That's years of the airport director, 30, okay, 37. 37 years of airport. Okay. <laughs> in your humble opinion, do you think we're real close to getting a good company in? Getting the company this, to come this, in. This, this uh, public charter is where we very close to getting this. Yes. So we just lost. Now, it. Larry, <coughs> the risk is there. We're going to lose it. Now, you may want to give an opportunity Carl's, to Carl's to the people to address. I think everybody wanted him to say something. Oh, 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 I'm not finished. No, 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 okay. Stay with it. Stay with it. Okay. Go I'm, ahead. I'm not Where finished. You know? I, I, I think I still had some time. Yes, you do. Yeah. Uh, you got to get in line, Carl. So, um, Larry, I, I appreciate your, your professionalism and everything. So, what, what I'm going to say here, it, I don't mean to demean you whatsoever, but the answer I got was, no, I haven't offered $2 million to anybody else because we don't have a pot of money. We don't do that. So if we don't have a pot of money, how can we offer that guarantee to another airline with a mm, invisible pot of money that we don't have according to our airport director? Can I, can I make a response? Sure. I don't think that he's saying that we don't have money available. I think he's saying that it becomes a specific proposal that's presented. Yes. And in this, in this situation, the amount would have been $2 million is what they're saying they would need for break even. Some other company may have a lower or greater amount depending on their evaluation of their needs and what it would take for flights within this community. Now, this, this is the situation that we have right now, which is because of past failures like Titan and some of these other things that we've seen, we have put in place criteria, and we're asking that those criteria be used to evaluate. And simply doing background checks, et cetera, is not enough. There needs to be a business analysis on that. And once that's done, we'll have the information that we can use to evaluate the proposal. And that is essentially, when you first came up here, what you said you wanted to see happen. Yes. And before all of this got started, we informed you that's what we were going to do. And no, in this case, you know, they're asking for this amount of money in order to make this an operational, this work operationally for them. Another company may have had another amount, but this is the company we have, and they're probably the first viable company that would actually offer services in many years. And the mayor is correct that we have been trying to get international service for years. We don't have international they're service. Not lining up. Hold on a second. We have basically charter flights coming in from Monterrey, Mexico City, and these types of services are being provided on a smaller scale with smaller airplanes, but as far as large scale or larger scale passenger service, we don't have that. And one of the things that we're not getting are fees that are generated from that as well. 
and that would assist our airport as well. These are some of the differences between a charter and an airline. And we're trying to get an airline in because that's going to benefit our community and we're going to be able to move larger amounts of people into and out of this area and it will have a trickle down effect. Whether it's this company or another company, I don't know. And until we get all the information, we can't vote on it. And that's why we all decided to wait 25 days. Okay. Just two questions. Two questions as a follow-up. Um, you, you mentioned, Commissioner Triani, that um, different companies might have a break-even. You're exactly right. In finance, there are different break-even points, depending on how good we do business. But without <laughs> evaluating other companies' proposals, and, and, I, and I know you're saying that there, and Charlie, you said uh, that there, there's not any other ones. But how do we know? Because they I, go to conventions I, every year. Yeah, but you when, go to the airline conventions and you go bid for them, and nobody comes. But you're not you you haven't bid anything. No, they go offer their service. Like Brownsville goes to these conventions and asks for them to come down, and they don't come down for the last 15, 20 years. But the gentleman with Pan Am just said, "Hey, I wasn't offered this deal." Yes, he was. He's been on there for a year and a half trying to get it, and can't get any planes to come down here. So he he's lying. He, he's yes. lying. That's why he left after he's he lying. Let's just say he's reevaluating it. Okay. Okay. One one last question. Uh, the smartest finance guy here. Anybody? Pete Gonzalez, right Pete. There. Hey, I remember Pete. How you doing, Pete? What's the ROI on this on this project? Yeah, the projected ROI. No idea. Could it be a, a negative? I mean, is it possible? I mean, there, there's you got to have some kind of probability that. Uh, Maybe it's not fair to be asking you, but everybody pointed to you. Can, can we let somebody else talk? We'll answer your question. Okay. I think our airport is ready to answer that. you want to answer that? I would simply refer to, you know, such things as Dr. Malky's study and so forth the commission has had an opportunity to look at. If you look at a return on investment, which is what the gentleman is talking about, return on investment for a person coming from DFW into the community. Let's assume that that's worth a dollar, okay? That that investment in the community is worth a dollar a person. The, the amount of investment for a person coming from Mexico into this community is worth about $6. It's about six times the value associated with a person coming from DFW to the community. I don't know if that helps you, but yes, it yes, gives yes, you an idea. Yes, okay. yes, yes, it does, it does. And there, there's obviously there's a projection for the number of passengers that there's going to be, et cetera. So from that projection, you get, well, the, we're, we're counting on $6 in hotel revenue, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, plus we're spending X amount of dollars. So you do the math and you figure out, hey, our return on investment is blah. Mm -hmm. You guys need some homework, man. I mean, you guys. And that's and the whole point is we're waiting to hear what the numbers are. Well, he doesn't have the answer, so. Well, he just said that it was six dollars, but but compared yeah. to the amount that we're investing, what is the ROI? And the I simple the simple reason I ask this, Pat, is that we sell bonds to raise revenue. Okay, there's an interest rate in the bonds that we sell. That's the cost of money to the city. So if we're not generating at least what the cost of the bonds are, we're losing money. And it's just a simple question. And, and if you don't have the answer, that's, that's fine. We'll <coughs> Next, thank you. Uh, thank you. Please, thank you, Mr. Chavez. Good evening. My name is Teresa Saldivar. I'm a resident here in Brownsville. First off, this is kind of off topic, but thank you all for supporting the HB bill for the pet theft because it is more than value in dollars. It's a matter of they are stealing dogs, holding them for ransom, and so it, it's more than just a value thing. And they're also using them for bait dogs, which is a very cruel thing. So thank you for passing that. Now, with regards to the issue at hand, I think uh, a lot of the issues that the uh, citizens have, which I did, is lack of information. And right now, this evening, I've learned a lot of information, like where to go to get the information, uh, which I was not aware of. Whether it's just because I'm new to Brownsville or I just don't know how things 
happen in the city and how you guys, how it starts to the finish, to gets to your desk, and how you guys um, uh, think about it, discuss it, and so forth. So I think, Pat, that the, the majority of the, the, the issue, the angst with people is that they don't know. And they come here to learn. And you tell them, go seek it out. Well, they're here seeking out that information. And when you talk down to them, telling them that they just don't know, you're absolutely right. But you don't have to talk down to them in order to get that across to them. It's, it's our jobs as citizens to educate ourselves. And it's your job to give us the information. I was not aware that I could go sit at an advisory committee for the airport until you said it right now. Now I know if I have a question who I can call and that I don't have to come to these meetings and listen to all the rhetoric and the arguments and all the stuff that I really don't want to hear. I want to hear information. I want to know that you guys did your homework. I want to know the pros and cons. And Mr. Troiani is correct in when he stated earlier that we don't need the details. We need to know that you guys are doing your homework, that you're checking the pros and cons, and what the ROI is to the community, and how it will invest, you know, bring more jobs, bring more other companies, what have you. But there is a process, and you need to inform us about it. And if you had just stated, even in the paper, Brownsville's considering, you know, a proposal from this company to do, you know, passenger cargo out of month between Mexico and here, then people would have started coming to the meetings. But I barely heard about this because I read about it because of Mr. Quintanilla's own statement in the newspaper. He wrote a huge editorial or statement, and it was all him promoting it. But yet you're telling me that he has nothing to do with it but yet he's promoting it. And now you're telling me we lost the bid because he's sitting here and he's offended. But he has nothing to do with it. So there's some contradictions here that I don't understand. And I think that's what people get upset about. Well, he's gonna to respond to that. I can't, I can't speak for him, so. Right. I can't, I can't, I can't now, speak for him. Now, nobody wants to lose business. No. We want the, okay. the community to grow. I can't grow. speak for him. I'll, I'll allow him to speak for himself. But let me point out, uh, the agenda for the meeting is publicized in the Herald. Right. It's put on TV. Right. It's put on the website. Right. Uh, it's posted here on the uh, 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 downstairs. Right. But it gives some very ambiguous information. It's just very vague okay. as to, you know. And so okay. when people want to ask more questions, we think this is the place to come and ask them. And then we're told, well, you didn't do this, and you didn't go to that, and you didn't go to your meeting, no, no, and you no, should have no, gone here, no, you should have no, asked there. You're welcome to come here. And I'm, so that's no, no. why I myself am here. You're misinterpreting. You're welcome to come here and ask all the questions you want when it's open up to public hearing. That's my purpose that's what, for being here, not hearings, to argue or fight, no, no, but no. to find well, out you're information. You're misunderstanding. That's what public hearings is all about. Now, okay. if you're concerned as a citizen, you always have the option to contact. I did. Mayor. I emailed you and my district commissioner with respect to this issue and asked and let you know that I had some serious reservations because of information that I had read and heard. Okay. And I didn't get a response back, which is fine. I know you guys are busy and it was kind of short notice. But still, I do use the channels that are available to try to find out information. I and that's why I came them. here. Thank you. I respond to all of mine, okay? Yeah. And I answer my calls, okay? But what I'm saying is, uh, you have the commission to contact, you have the mayor to contact, and you have all the staff here to contact. They're, they're available to you. I mean, it's, it's, that's no secret. It's been, it's been here. And, this and, is, and I understand this is, that. This is your government. And, and that's your, why I'm here. This is your city. Oh, I understand that. You work okay. for us. And I believe me, I, you don't have to reiterate that 20 times to me. I understand that. I understand there's a process. I understand there's process for everything that you all do. And that there are also rules. And that we must abide by them. But the community wanted, had some, inf you know, had misinformation, as you put it. Well, that's why we came, was to ask, you know, what's going on. And the number you know, and, and you directed me to another avenue of where I can get that information and so that I can come better informed, and I appreciate that. Thank you. The number for the city secretary is 548-6000. For anybody who wants to call, just ask for the city secretary, and she'll be glad to uh, explain anything to you. That's all so, I wanted to say. Thank, thank you. you. It's called personal responsibility. If you want to see a dentist, 
you look them up on the phone, and you call them. You set up an appointment, and you go over what you want done, and you decide. Oh, you don't want Public to hear what you have to say? Not at all. Oh. Thank you, Melissa. That, that goes to show that they don't want to be informed. Well, you know. But, um, it's, that's Your Honor, if I could approach you and you could read something, I think that would be very important uh, to understand the magnitude of the effort that has been done by public charters. I think that it's unfortunate that they have opted to leave the room, but I think that there's a lot of people watching uh, on cable and television as to the reality of the situation. Uh, I am an activist. I have a long history of community involvement. I have a long history of uh, being uh, supportive of uh, the right to speak and the right to uh, question when something is wrong. Um, I am not perfect. I've been massacred in the blogs for something that happened many, many years ago. My life has changed. It's been positive. It's been productive. It's been effective. I speak on behalf of children. I defend uh, immigrants who are, whose civil rights are violated. I have been instrumental in litigating against cities that have been horrific against our community by implementing unconstitutional laws. Um, I have led a major national campaign uh, to defend children addicted to cheese heroin. When they were dying, I was not afraid to go on television and declare war on drug dealers. And so I'm not here to talk about me and what I've done and what my life has been about, but I'm here to talk about something that is going to be good for Brownsville. And I'd like to give you a little history of how this happened, and it's very simple. I approached the mayor, and I approached Mr. Camarillo, I've, I've spoken to Mr. Longoria, I've spoken to Mr. Atkinson, and I've spoken to many people about the need for a regional airport. I fly in, and I'm probably a very extensive, frequent flyer, uh, to the point that when I get to the airport, um, they already know me because I've been coming here for two years. I, I didn't just come here yesterday or the day before. I've been coming here for two years. I spent on airline tickets. I've stayed, stayed in your hotels. I've shopped at your malls. I've eaten at your restaurants. I've rented cars. I've stayed in South Padre Island. I bought helicopters for my children. I've been very... Uh, a very um, strong consumer in Brownsville. I'm also a taxpayer indirectly for everything that I consume. But I think that if you talk about how this happened, it happened very simple. I, you know, there was an opportunity. You know, there's no flights to, to Tampico. There's no flights to Monterey. My ex-wife lives in Tampico or lived in Tampico. And every time I had to drive, uh, to go visit her family. I had to drive from Dallas to Brownsville, Brownsville to Tampico. And whenever I had to fly, and I had to fly with three people, and I would have to make a reservation from Dallas to Tampico, it would cost about $700. So when you multiply 700 times three, it's 2,100. And contrary to popular belief, I'm not a millionaire and I'm not wealthy, but I know what it costs to get to Tampico. If you were to do you're, if, if anyone was to go on Travelocity or on Expedia or anywhere else and try to book a reservation from Brownsville to uh, Tampico, you would probably get a fare of $579 with 14 days advance. If you were to do it from one day to the other, it would be about $700 to get from Brownsville to Tampico. But you wouldn't go directly from Brownsville to Tampico you'd have to go Brownsville, Houston, Houston, Tampico, or Brownsville, Dallas, Dallas, Mexico City, Mexico, Mexico City, Tampico. That's unfortunate for the citizens of Brownsville. That's unfortunate for people who want to invest in this community, people who want to purchase homes in this community, people who want to shop in this community. They're not going to do it. So they basically go elsewhere. And, and if you go throughout the entire valley, there's not one direct flight from the valley into, into Monterey or Mexico City. Have we done our homework? And I speak we because I've been assisting Mr. Gallagher, who's a friend of mine. I've known him for five years. It's not like I've known him for a couple of days. And I would like to talk to you about my relationship with him 
because it's been questioned. I think it was even asked. Mr. Gallagher, uh, I approached him about developing a direct flight from Dallas to Mexico City because Dallas had the same problem that Brownsville had. Even though it had a million Hispanics and most of them Mexican, there was no direct flight from Dallas, Texas to Mexico City. American Airlines wasn't doing it. Mexicana wasn't doing it. Nobody was doing it. So I said, hey, this is an opportunity. I went to Ryanair about trying to charter a plane to get transportation from Dallas to Mexico City. It was too expensive. So I went to Mr. Jim Gallagher. And I said, Jim, I read about you. I've been, they've been told, they told me to talk to you. We need to get a direct flight from Dallas to Mexico City. He went, we met with the airport directors like Mr. Larry Brown, and we presented an opportunity to create a direct flight from Dallas to Mexico City. Mr. Gallagher, within a short period of time, was able to get a permit from the FAA that would authorize him through his company to fly directly from Dallas to Mexico City. We then went to the airport board and we said we would like to get some incentives because obviously this gentleman is going to come in here and he's going to put a 737-200 and it's going to fly to Mexico City. I think you should give him some incentives. Well, he got the permit. A week later, Mexican and American Airlines joint, to, joint ventured and all of a sudden Dallas had direct flight from Dallas to Mexico City. Had we had the money, the Mexicana or American Airlines, I would be the owner of an airline flying from Dallas to Mexico City. But instead, I decided to commit my life to defending children. Now, I'd like to bring you, I would like to, re, to show you something that's very similar to what happened in Dallas. And I ask you, Your Honor, to read it. Attach your copies of applications and AIP payment. They will issue the Mexican AOC next week. Once I have it, it will be able to present the application for the permit and the approval of the policy. Regards, Rosa Maria. It's directed to Jim. So what does that mean? That means that this gentleman in three weeks has been able to get a permit for direct flights from Brownsville to Monterey and Tampico. In three weeks, he's been able to do what other companies have not been willing or able to do. So is there a commitment to Brownsville? There's absolutely commitment. Is there investment into Brownsville? Absolutely there's an investment. There's not just an investment of application, but there's an investment of jets, there's an investment of training, there's an investment of media, there's an investment of web pages. There's an investment of receiving uh, resumes from people. There's an investment in talking to, host to hotels and businesses. Today, I can give you a card of Pablo Gonzalez. He's a retired uh, worker. He said, you know what, when your flight starts, I'll buy some tickets. I could show you the... Uh, the car to the Marriott Residence Inn, that's where I'm staying. If anyone's asking if they want to look for me, I'm staying there. And ask the lady who's in charge of the, who's a general manager, what it means not to have an airline. What it means to have empty rooms. Ask Mr. Longoria's father at the uh, taxi stand. Uh, he's your uncle? Ask him at the, at the stand at, at uh, Brownsville Airport how many passengers are coming in and how much service they're providing, and what opportunities they're getting. And so what will this flight do for Brownsville? It's going to increase traffic. You'll have 800 people per week. You'll have 40,000 per year. There's, Mr. Brown, how many passengers fly in that fly right now? 90,000 on our claimants per year are 90,000. This flight, this project, would fly 50% of what American and Continental's flying. And like some people say, this is a miserable, puny, small, insignificant airline called Public Charter. But it'll be transporting 40,000 people. And if you look at 40,000 people 
and you look at the amount of money that they're going to be spending in this city on food, on clothing, on theaters, on renting cars or taking taxis or going to uh, Las, Br Las Brasas or going to Cheddar's or going to Camperos or going anywhere else and spending money, that's a return on investment. 40,000 people, how much do they pay per airline, per fee? Ask Mr. Brown. They pay $4.50. $4.50 every time they step on your airport. That means that every time they get on a plane and every time they land, it's going to be $9. You take 40,000 times 9, that's $360,000. That does not include the fuel. That does not include the FICA, the workman's comp, and all the, uh, the employment and taxes that are paid to employees. <laughs> ask Mr. Brown or ask Mr. Uh, Mr. Gallagher how many resumes have been received within a period of three weeks, over 200 resumes of people looking for jobs. Unfortunately, 200 people will not be hired, but there's a demand for jobs in this economy. Ask Mr. Brown how many letters he has received from hotels and businesses who are crying out for services into Mexico so that people can come in and spend some money. That's return on investment. That's what we talk about. And so, yes, I am what I am. But when I came and I brought Jim Gallagher here, because despite the fact what people say and despite what they talk about me, I think I am as much Brownsville as anyone else, because I spent the last two years here spending a lot of money, bringing my children, going to Padre Island, spending uh, Thanksgiving and spending Christmas and spending time. And many people have seen me with my children. And let me tell you one thing, I'm not a deadbeat father. And so when I brought Jim Gallagher, I didn't bring Jim Gallagher on a speculation. I brought Jim Gallagher on, on as being a promoter for, for Brownsville, saying Brownsville is a good city. It has great potential. It has unlimited possibilities. It has South Padre Island. It has Matamoros. It has Harlingen. It has all these cities and all these people. Why does it not have regional transportation to Monterey or, or uh, Tampico? Why do, do you not have direct flights to San Luis Potosí? Or why don't you have direct flights to Toluca or Querétaro or Guanajuato or other parts of Mexico when you have a significant population base that's close to, you know, two million people? It's illogical, it's unconscionable, and it's unacceptable for a city like Brownsville not to have direct flights into Mexico. And you have the opportunity today to make a decision to make sure that this gentleman over there, who's made a commitment to come here, and he's a gentleman from Cleveland and Pennsylvania, he's not a Mexican, he's not Hispanic, he's an Anglo-American that's probably scared as much as anyone else to go into Mexico. But yet, he was convinced to go into Mexico and provide services and bring a jet and make a commitment to the city and to refuse him or to basically deny him would be a tragedy for the citizens of Brownsville and it would be a tragedy for the, for the city of Brownsville. And what it will do is send the message that when people want to invest in this city, when people want to bring their resources and their planes and their jets and their money and their time and their experience, that the city of Brownsville, because of political people and because 35 people come in and go on blogs, if you go on, on Acción America, and you see me, you'll see me marching in front of 100,000 people. You'll see me marching in front of thousands and thousands of people, and that's on video. I didn't spend my time trying to pack this room to convince and threaten anybody. I spent my time helping my friend, Jim Gallagher, bring an airline to this city and to, to make sure that this city grows and progresses because one day I want to be part of the city. And if I didn't have my children in school, in Walnut Hill and at Cabell Elementary, I would be here because I think Brown Hill, Brown, Brownsville has great potential. And whether or not I have a felony conviction or whether or not I have this or that, 
The bottom line is that I have committed my life to do positive things. And if there's one person that's going to judge me, and that's God and Jesus Christ, and I'm at peace with him. I hope you make the decision to bring this guy in and, and, and do your due diligence. Check him out. You'll find that at the end, he has reservation systems. He has jet planes. He's got certification. He's got FAA authorizations. He's got permits in Mexico. He's got bonding. He has everything that's necessary to bring a direct flight to Mexico. And you have the opportunity to welcome him to, him to Brownsville instead of chasing him and scaring him. And like Mr. Longoria say, scaring him away from not coming back. If there's any questions that anyone may want to have of me, I'm going to give you my number. It's 215-524-1011. If anyone would like to ask any questions of me, please call me. If they want to know where I live, it's 421 South Dwight. And when they ask about my home as an office, because it's been about a block, look, Google the map. It's an 8,000 square foot home. There's a 4,000 square foot uh, office complex, and it's on two acres. And we have offices, Wi-Fi, telephones, staff people working there, and that is how we defend our community in Dallas. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Mr. Catania, before you leave. If there's any questions? Yeah, uh, what's the website uh, for public charters so people who want it's, it, more information on public charters? What's the website? It's publiccharters.com. Uh, it's charterairtransport.com. Um, you could Google them. Um, you, could, you, you could call Department of Transportation, FAA, and look at their registry, look at their information. The, you know, the travel industry is very regulated. It's not like you're under the radar. If you wanted to find out about public charters or charter air transport or Jim Gallagher, Department of Transportation would have them. Federal Aviation Authority would have them. They have web pages. They're not hiding. Do your due diligence. But if you do your due diligence, do it based on due diligence. Don't do it based on politics. Don't do it based on candidates. Don't do it based on you know, this for that. Do it based on sound economic financial data. Base it on what he's worth and what he's going to bring to this table. Don't do it on politics. If you do it on politics, shame on you. Thank you. Anybody has any questions of Mr. Quintanilla? Oh, I mean, everybody's talking about him. Yes, sir, I am Carlos Quintanilla. <laughs> well, Dag, do you have any questions of Mr. Pastor, Pastor, you have any questions? Thank you very much. I'd just like to say a little bit of information would have avoided all of this. And we, you but know hey, what, Your Honor? But whose fault is that? We've been putting this information out. Like this lady said, she came here to get the information. And they felt like they were being brushed aside. But when did, they come, but when did they come, uh, Pastor? They hadn't come till tonight. You know why? Because somebody was steering them up with lies. Okay? So Mr. Mr. No, no, no. Quintanilla, well, real hey, quick. Take personal responsibility, Ms. Pastor. No, I, I'm, I'm saying we've gotten that information. Yeah, but yeah, at the, expense, at the expense of almost destroying a project. A little of information early on, 10 minutes of information would have saved us an hour. The information has always been available, my friend. Let me ask you something, Mr. Quintanilla, real quick. Real quick. And this is something that I was trying to work on, and he came to the city. I gave a copy of Proposal to Rose about feeding kids. He wants to feed 5,000 kids in Brownsville this summer through a program out of Dallas. This is what inspired me to want to work with Mr. Quintanilla and work with the city commission. Talk a little about what you were doing. And I hope this tonight doesn't scare you away from committing no, it, to it the doesn't. It, 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 no, no, no. Wait, wait a second, wait a second. But, but wait you know second, what? Wait a no, no. Wait, wait, before you speak, during the relief effort, he sent me a trailer of goods for Mexico. That's right. Okay? He got on radio in Dallas and promoted a relief effort. Mm -hmm. That's okay? right. Okay? So I don't know Mr. Cantina uh, other than an acquaintance. Okay? But he did step up to the plate without even us asking him. And he's willing to feed 5,000 kids and all this other stuff. You know, people have a personal issue with somebody, they should take it up with that person. So, no, listen, listen, NBA, listen to me. Well, your enemies are your enemies. They're not my enemies. They're not mine either. Okay. No, well, but what I'm saying is, is no, no it, se it seems like there was a personal uh, agenda against Mr. Quintanilla. They should take it up with him. 
He has nothing to do with. He has nothing to do with the city. He has nothing to do with the city. Well, Your Honor, if I if, if I can address that, I did have conversations with I think Linda Castro de uh, from. I had, I, I, and I'd be willing to share with you my extensive conversations with her. I had extensive, extensive conversations with her on, on Facebook, and I'd be willing to share that to the public. And my conversation with her was not antagonistic. It was, was not aggressive. It was very diplomatic, very cordial. I even invited her to go next week, because we're meeting with the governor of Nuevo Leon to basically promote this project, and she agreed to go. So it's not like we haven't been outgoing and trying to incorporate everybody. I would, I would hope she would then have her come back. We're not asking. Hey, he interrupted me. There's nothing to defend. What are you jumping in for? There's nothing to defend. Why are we talking about his opponent defending him for all the good things that he's done? Because it's a fact. It's an opportunity to all the charitable things they have done. Okay. Well, I have. I, I've been attacked, Your Honor. He's been. He's, he's been talked about on the blogs. It's not fair to this gentleman. They had <laughs> the opportunity. Not fair to no, no, wait, no, Zeke. Here to you're right. Zeke. Zeke. They had. They had, they had the opportunity. They had the opportunity. Well, no, no one. No, 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 no one I'm has to, to lift fair, me sir. up. No, I lift no, myself no, up. No, I, Your Honor. I'm sorry, you Your Honor. I'm fair to everybody. Your Honor, you don't have to lift me up. I can lift myself up. Stay here, asking questions. Or do whatever they want. It's easy to blast people. It's easy to blast people. But he's here. He's willing to face them. They decided to walk out. He is here, sir. And if and he I has, advise him and not if he, to speak right now. If he has any questions, Your Honor, <laughs> if he has any questions regarding Fly Frontera, you have, you have, Jim you have Gallagher questions is there. He can answer them, and I'll answer no, whatever you have questions, questions he has. Gentleman. Ask okay, me be, the questions. Uh, Mr. Quintanilla, yeah. do you have questions? Very confident, or else I wouldn't be here. On a, on a one to one hundred percent confidence, how confident are you that the numbers that you're speaking about, the volume of people, et cetera, is going to happen? Very simple. <laughs> if you look at the saber, you know, you, you understand saber, yeah, right? You said no, but but, 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 I'm but I'm I, I, you're asking me to give you an answer. Are you familiar with saber? No. Okay, saber is a reservation system that the airlines use. They basically track, you know, the kind of travel that goes from one city to one destination. So Sabre basically has the number of people traveling from one city to another, and they project 72% travel, okay? That's basically 72% travel from Monterey to Dallas, Monterey to Houston, the big city. So if you look at that, you extrapolate that, and you say, okay, if these people are going from Dallas to Houston, and from Monterey to Houston, Houston to Brownsville, what does that mean? That they're traveling, that they're using your services, that they're basically, that there's a need. If you look at the population data, then you look at the, 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 the populations of Matamoros and Harlingen and Brownsville, and you look at all of that, and you look at the number of homes that, and businesses that are owned by people in Monterey, South Hydro Island, if you look at the letter that was included in the packet to the city council members, it basically says, and I'm sure uh, <coughs> Melissa Samora can testify that because she was a, 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 a uh, spokesman for Padre Island as to the significant investment of Mexican ownership in the South Padre Island, it's quite substantial. So I would, I would ask her to answer that question as to how much investment there is for Monterey in South Padre Island. Yeah, how are they getting that wasn't the question I asked. But, but that's a question of how do I get this data? Based on ownership of South Padre Island, the based on saver, well, based on demographics, well, you based on population. How confident are you? Absolutely confident. Hundred percent. I'm willing okay. to. I'm Why here. do we have to pay you a dime or guarantee you a dime Nobody's if you're a hundred percent positive of what's going to happen? You're not paying me a dime. We're guaranteeing it. But for you're you. not paying me a dime. We're guaranteeing you two million dollars. No, nobody's guaranteeing two million. Dollars. That's not true. Why would you just say, look, you don't have to no, guarantee I, anything? We're hundred percent positive like that it's going to happen. Would you like me to explain how the guarantee works? Uh, yes, please. Okay. please do I'm going to explain how the guarantee works. If there's thirty flights, if there's thirty passengers, right? If there's twenty-one passengers, basically that's the guarantee. If if there's only seventeen passengers then the city has a responsibility of four tickets. Four tickets times 130. That's per flight? Per flight. Okay. How many flights? Okay, there's actually, if you look at how many flights, there's 13 flights per week. Multiply that times two. 
Take 26 times 130, how much is that? That's the guarantee. That's the guarantee. Take that number, multiply it by 52, how much is that? Sir. How much is that? I, I, I'm not giving well, you Well, let me tell you how much it is. If you, if, you take, if you take 26 times 52, it's about $100,000, right? Okay. So how much would it take to basically wipe out that million dollars? And what? And, and then what happens if you have 28 people who are applying and the guarantee is 21? What happens to those seven seats and the difference on that flight? There's a lot of ifs. Well, no, but what happens? I'm, I'm, I'm just using there's the There's a lot of ifs. But, there's no but, 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 but let me tell you, what happens if it goes back into the but that's just army, so. Why make, the, why make taxpayers guarantee you anything? Okay. Okay. I've given you my okay, answer. Uh, I think I've explained it. I got Steve one more. I think we got Thank Steve. You. <laughs> Zeke, do you have any questions of this gentleman? No. Because okay. no matter what I ask him, he's going to interrupt. No. I'm not going to take conversations. Ask, ask a period. question. Ask your question. What do I ask him? You said, okay, what is your involvement with Black Frontera? My involvement is my friendship with him. That's it. That's my involvement. So why do you think he's speaking? You can come speak. He I already spoke. He, to he's from already here. spoke to the. Uh, he's already spoke to them. I think they gave you an opportunity to re to actually defend yourself over all the the, uh, and uh, I the people that you offended on the blog or the cheese man or whatever not, you not said. Not getting personal. You're no, I'm not me, getting you're personal. You're asking me a question about. I'm Friday asking Friday. you a question. You're asking me a question about that. So then you. you don't have nothing to do with what, it. Then why are you what, here? What is the question? Why are you here? Why am I here? Yes, sir. I'll tell you why I'm here because I'm I'm making sure that this guy. He's not going to be come up here and have people like you asking oh, questions man. and being very so aggressive. He can't defend himself. Who's a millionaire? Him or you? And he can defend himself. He's not a millionaire. Ask, ask him a question. Okay, look, no, it's a free country, Zeke. He's welcome to go question, and him. be friends with anybody. Okay, Steve. Steve's next. Well, the plus seven people is that if there's a balance, if there's 28 people, that goes back in credit to the city. Go ahead, we're going to let you speak. So basically, if it's over 21 people, the city pays nothing. And so there's never, ever $2 million in a pot. It doesn't exist. Thank you, sir. It goes back. Thank you. But you got to fill it. And we're going to fill it. Okay, uh, Steve. What you got, Steve? through Matamoros, Ciudad Victoria, and San Luis Potosí. So, so we're pushing that on Tamaulipas. Hopefully, we'll get an answer in the next uh, 12 months, 18 months, as marketing. You'll never see it Highway 69, but maybe you'll see it as Ruta 69. So let me uh, start out real quick here as airline experience. And second, I do go to the BDC board meetings. I don't go every month, of course. JBIC meetings, I sometimes go. I do go to the Port of Brownsville meetings. I also make public comments. I do the best I can to bring traffic. We need traffic. We've been traffic depleting since 1989, <coughs> and we still have the same numbers. So that worries me. That was one of the reasons why I'm here. That's one of the reasons why I'm also talking to you right now, because it worries me. History worries me. You know. Uh, of course, you weren't here on the Titan decisions and other things that happened in our history. But I've seen 20 years of no growth, you know. That I am tired of. You know, no growth? Well, guess what? I will be a prophecy. I will give you a prophecy. If there's nothing done, we'll be like this for another 20 years. Or 40. Or 80. Or 100. Just look at 100 years ago. Where were we? A hundred years ago, 1920, or, okay, correct me, my math, 1911. That wasn't that before Hotel Jardin was built? Wasn't that before the airport was created? Because I think it was 1917, Muslim. Obviously, I'm not talking about 1929, of course. Historically, we know that. But we did get an airline, a big one, in an infancy. And yeah, then it grew. And then the city commissioners voted no. And then things happened like history. I'm just bringing up some notes here. I'm trying to summarize 
what I've seen in the last few years, like I said, I, I do participate in a lot of meetings and, you know, it's a very historical decision you guys are about to take. Very historic. You know, sometimes people come in and comment <coughs> and talk and we could be here another three hours. You know, and I don't want to take three hours of your time. I, I mean, I'm very happy that you have been able to table it, if that's the correct, correct terminology. Uh, I do come to the board meetings to learn, you know, uh, how to run meetings. And like I said, you know, I, I like the Port of Browns, but actually I do feel a lot of future there. Uh, you know, and I believe the airport also has future. You know, you guys know about a lot of projects that are happening in Brownsville. I don't have to tell you about what's happening in 2014, 2015. There's other projects coming in. And if this is a good decision to table it and make a more informed decision, so be it. Because if you believe it or not, I didn't hear about this deal until I came in today. You know, I'm coming in just to move my, you know, traffic. You know, the Porter Browns one knows me. You know, the directors. Larry Brown knows me. So Larry Brown knows I'm the only one that goes to the advisory meetings. Yes or no, Larry? You know? <laughs> You know, I don't go every month, uh, you know, I, I, I'm an entrepreneur as well, I gotta move stuff. But I do go to the advisory meetings. Uh, many times I've tried to understand why they get appointed, fine, that's the way it works. Uh, I do go to the BDC meetings, I do go to the JBIC meetings. But it's kind of weird that I didn't hear anything about this until tonight. So, so I'm just giving you feedback that even though I'm informed, you know, it, did, it, didn't, it didn't go to the city <coughs> somehow until it hit newspapers, which is sometimes negative, you know. So that's just, just my recap. Now, do remember that I'm not known as uh, nicknames or whatever, but sometimes I do consider myself an integrator. I integrate a lot of stuff, you know. We are part of the International Committee from Brown and Matamoros, and if you believe it or not, integration is happening, finally, after two years. I'm very happy on the historical moment that we live in, in Brownsville. And I do believe that decisions with informative, intelligent, smart, public comments will become a much more favorable result than all the negative, or hopefully today's positive, <laughs> uh, you know, is my feedback summary on it. So I don't know if you have any questions for me? I could take two, no questions, you sure? I'm practicing. <laughs> Okay. Thanks, sir. I, I thank you, Mayor, you. and thank you, members of the commission. I do respect you guys. I know that, you know, uh, things like this happen, but I do understand that I'm speaking today as a citizen of Brownsville. I was born here, I was raised here, and I did go to the airport in the 80s when there was no airlines. I used <coughs> to bike myself through there. Well, Steve, so uh, I have to have history. Steve, I think you'd be, I think you're a fine young man. I would love to put you on one of the boards and I'll be uh, contacting you if you leave your number with Estella, maybe get you involved sure. in some of those boards there. Yeah. As far as uh, being informed, nobody's ever informed in everything that goes on. I mean, we're all, we're all busy people. I and, agree with you. But you know, the, it, it, go, it comes out in the paper, it comes out on the TV, it comes out on the websites, it comes out on that, and things do get by us. Yes. And um, sometimes you take something like this and it brings it, people together and, and, and awareness raises awareness, awareness. Uh, but you know it should be with civility it should be constructive it should be in search of the truth it should be in the best interest of our community when people go out misinformed and I'm talking about people that know how to get information that come here and know about this <coughs> get out of the blogs and, and personal attacks uh, things that are not for the benefit of the issue or the, or the, uh, the, the city, it, it, that doesn't help anybody. It doesn't help anybody. Well, I'll we give you feedback. I'll give you feedback. Yeah. It, it is a positive feedback that you're taking table on this because it, it allows you to inform yourself much better, uh, take care of the business of the city uh, instead of historically situations like in the 60s and you know 80s and whatever. I don't want to. I don't want to touch bases on that. And that's where it raises up. The situation, you know, and, and obviously we, we witnessed that. You know, I, I, I do think um, due to the situation, uh, it is very civil, you know, scenario, and I'm glad you have the police department here. <laughs> but I'm just giving you feedback as an integrator. I, I do appreciate that. a lot of stuff between Matamoros, and I do go every day, even though there's problems with it, because I do believe in our key city, 
you know, we're friends of Matamoros. We shouldn't be friends three days of the year. We should be friends every day. That's right. They need us. We need them. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Okay. Uh, can we uh, have a motion? Motion to adjourn. No, we, have no, we have some items left. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this was opened back up. Can we have a motion? Uh, you all want to table it? What do you want to do? I want to continue with the motion for 25 more days for due diligence to be done. Second. Have a motion? No, you opened it up. You, no, you opened it up. A motion to uh, continue for 25 more days. Uh, uh, second. Can I have a second? Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. I say nay. nay. No nay. Melissa, you're the only name? Twenty five days to look her over. That's good. Okay, next item. <coughs> That'd be fourteen. Item fourteen, consideration and action to adopt budget amendment resolution number twenty eleven zero thirty three to amend the general fund, convention and tourism fund, community development fund, landfill tipping fee increase fund, two thousand and eight CO fund. Airport Fund, Motor Vehicle Parking System Fund, Public Transit, and the Brownsville Golf Center Fund to provide funding to cover the required full rate to the Employee Retirement Fund and to provide funding for the purchase of two ambulances, animal shelter vehicles, and Brownsville Golf Center equipment. Honorable Mayor, Honorable Mayor members of the City Commission, this item includes various funds, uh, which is included in the, uh, in the item. Uh, to re that they will fund the full rate for the retirement system, retirement fund. We also need in need of uh, ambulances, and we're recommending the two ambulances be be, be uh, set up in the budget for later purchase, as well as animal shelter vehicles. And there's some much needed equipment at the Brownsville Golf Center, and those are the budget amendments that we are requesting for you to approve tonight. Okay, this is an action item. Can I have a, a motion? Approve. Motion approved. Second. We have a second. We have a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Can I have a motion to table item 15? So moved. We have a motion by Commissioner Gowan, second by Commissioner Zamora. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Item 16? Item 16, consideration and action to accept Villanueva appraisal reports and recommended compensation for individual landowner. Staff recommendation is to accept the Villanueva appraisal report and recommended compensation of 13 individ individual landowners in the amount of $85,161. This funding is coming from the, uh, the Colonia Improvement Program founded by the Texas Water Development uh, Board Grant number uh, 10378 in the amount of $85,161. Uh, the administration of the planning and community development department concurs with this recommendation. We have a motion to approve by Commissioner Gowan, second by Commissioner Trani. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, can I have a motion for adjournment? So so thank moved. you. Wow, we have a chorus. Motion, a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. opposed? Stay. <laughs> thank you all. Thank you, sir.